Chapter 251, Match of the Colosseum The beautiful female gladiator saw the end of the corridor. At the end of the corridor, a wooden door with a metallic door handle was located at the end. Once she reached the door, she took a key from her cleavage and put it right inside the keyhole. Clink once she twisted the key, the lock clinked, and soon the door was ajar. She smiled and opened the door wide open, allowing Isaac to see everything inside. The most noticeable thing was the one-way mirror, which allows everyone inside the room to see the whole Colosseum perfectly, but no one will be able to look inside the room. The room was spacious enough to hold a small party of ten individuals. Two meters away from the windows, three sofas in light brownish color with animal fur as a cover were the VIP spectator seats. Sir. She motioned for Isaac to enter the VIP stands. Isaac nodded and entered the spacious room, but he smelled something strange in the air. The air in the room was much fresher than outside the room. The corridors had a stuffy scent that clogged Isaac's nose multiple times, but inside the room, he could breathe freely from his nose and mouth. Inhale, exhale. Sir, ring a bell if you need anything. She pointed at the golden bell that was right on top of a small square-shaped table. Once she saw Isaac nodding, she closed the door and soon left to continue to do her other tasks. Isaac looked at the closed door for several seconds before looking back at the sofas. How can they tell me I am legacy carrier? Isaac sat down on the sofa while thinking that specific thought. It can prove very problematic if someone who has terrible intentions finds out. Is there a way to stop anyone from finding out? He wished that there was more info about the legacy carriers, but the game was still in its infant phase. Swoosh asterisk a blast of wind suddenly brushed past Isaac, and when his face turned into confusion, a holographic screen appeared in front of him with dinging noise. Ding ding, welcome to Stronglord's Coliseum. Arena rankings, become a gladiator, only two choices were in front of Isaac. Once his finger touched the first choice, which was arena rankings. The holographic screen started transforming, becoming rows of letters and numbers. Soon, the holographic screen became something that could be read, and not the mush of different numbers and letters that were like a bunch of netcode. Isaac's attention shifted to the first row of words. 1. Dark side. League of Assassins, 1W0L, he already finished a match? Isaac looked surprised and remembered the infamous guild leader of the League of Assassins. He himself doesn't have that much interaction with him, but he was sure that they haven't forgotten about Duo Dungeon. Isaac swiped his hand, and the arena rankings disappeared. There was only one choice left, but it was obvious what it did. So far, Isaac has no intention of fighting in the Colosseum. But, he was curious and decided to check the upcoming matches. Creek after he thought about the upcoming matches, two large doors on the bottom of the Colosseum opened. From each side, three players popped up, in total, six players, every one of them having the same look. Look of excitement, but also nervousness, even though they were trying to hide it. There were over a hundred thousand spectators looking straight at them. Most of them are probably still high schoolers, and being in the center of attention of such an audience can make their mind go numb. Once the spectators saw them, they started screaming their hearts out. Doom dun dun doom dun dun the sound of drums, which Isaac had heard before, reappeared. He tried to find out where the noise came from and soon saw dozens of individuals dressed in gladiator attire slamming the drums with drumsticks as loud as they could. Doom dun dun doom dun dun the floor below Isaac's legs trembled causing a shiver to spread all around his body. The spectators started stomping the floor below them, making the sand ground below the Colosseum shaking, quaking, and trembling. The players looked at the sight with a mesmerized look. The sight was something they had never witnessed. Not in real life or in white online. This was the first time they felt their blood boiling. If even they felt their blood boiling, what about the six players that were the target of all those shouts? They felt even more nervous. What if they embarrass themselves? What if they lose? What if they aren't strong enough to impress the spectators? All sorts of thoughts went past their minds in a split second. Isaac noticed their faces turning conflicted and also regretful. They are too stiff, 
he shook his head and thought that the one who could withstand pressure most would be the winner. From one of the doors, a person appeared. She was a beautiful woman with similar gladiator attire, with bikinis and loincloth. Her long flowy blonde hair reached all the way to her lower back, and her long eyelashes were a sight to behold. Of course, the most noticeable trait on her was her physical body, but she had a surprisingly athletic body, especially the slight muscles around her arms. Once she arrived, the spectators started whistling loudly, while the families had to cover their children's eyes. She stopped in the middle of the Colosseum, and with a melodious tone, she started speaking, Welcome everyone. Everyone quieted down and listened to her beautiful voice. Today, she put her arms wide open, these six gladiators will fight for wealth, fame, and respect. The gods have blessed us. Therefore, everyone can enjoy the matches without worrying about bloodshed or death, because. She pointed at the six players and smiled beautifully. These gladiators have been blessed by the gods, making them immortal, but even though they are immortals. Only one shall be the victor. Cheers! The spectators started slamming their feet on the floor with excited shouts. Chapter 252, Wheel of Victory At the bottom of the massive Colosseum, a lonely-looking player with bloodied knuckles, messy hair, and an exhausted face was standing in the middle of five fallen players. His eyes showed the adrenaline rush that was running through his veins. Around him, the excited shouts of the spectators kept ringing in his ears. He covered his ears, hoping for the sounds to disappear, but he felt like the shouts became even louder. Against all odds, he won the arena match and was the last one standing. Even though he should be happy for winning, he wasn't. It was the most nerve-wracking thing he had done, and it was a miracle that he could keep standing on his two feet. But, once the adrenaline rush ends, who knows what happens to his body? The five fallen players soon disappeared from the arena and were teleported inside a resting room located somewhere in Colosseum. Every player who reaches 0 HP in the Colosseum doesn't die, instead gets healed miraculously in the resting room, which location was a complete mystery. Inside one of the VIP rooms, Isaac was amazed at the things he saw. Strong! He had to admit that the player showed what true master of martial arts techniques looks like. The player was part of brawler class and easily dealt with assassins stealth, archers arrows, and gunners machine gun blows. The way Brawler fought was something Isaac hadn't seen before. It wasn't as brute like as he expected. Instead, it was very masterful, and he can only imagine how strong pro Brawler players are. At the bottom of the Colosseum, the beautiful woman reappeared from the wide open door and shouted with excitement, We have a winner. Player Fist is the victor. Cheers! The spectators almost jumped on their feet, but managed to keep themselves in control, instead kept stomping the floor. The children kept waving their hands with excitement. From all the way to the spectator stands, they couldn't manage to see any blood. Instead, the beautiful sight of the brawler dodging all the attacks against all odds and sending attacks, which defeated his opponents with ease. With one punch, a player fell down to the ground. With one kick, a player was sent flying. Fist, the player who won shakily nodded towards the beautiful woman, who responded with a smile and a gentle look. Suddenly, a holographic lottery wheel appeared in the air. Fist frowned and wondered what it was. This is Wheel of Victory. She calmly explained to Fist, spectators, and everyone who had thoughts about becoming a gladiator. The one who wins has a chance to spin the wheel once. She smiled, and when she touched the wheel, her hand went through it. The gods also blessed the wheel, and only the match winner can spin it. The spectators looked amazed and soon erupted in cheers. Fist gulped and didn't know that he had to rely on his luck to get something from his hard-earned victory. His hand shakily touched the wheel, and with a leap of faith, he used all his remaining strength to spin the wheel. Swoosh asterisk the wheel started spinning rapidly. Every word in the wheel became blurry, unrecognizable, and hazy. The beautiful woman waited calmly while Fist could barely stand still. Inside the VIP room, Isaac leaned closer and narrowed his eyes, trying to use his eyesight to its fullest limits. The wheel became slower and slower until it stopped.
Fist gulped and saw the wheel stopping in a golden-colored area, which was the smallest area the wheel could stop at. The beautiful woman instantly became excited. Player Fist has one legacy quest. Fist and everyone in the Colosseum had to register those words in their minds. The spectators were the first ones who reacted. Cheers! Screams of excitement rang in the Colosseum, reaching all the way to the royal lair. Fist covered his face in disbelief. I won. Legacy quest? Congratulations, player Fist, I wish you luck. She waved her hand, and Fist suddenly disappeared from the arena and appeared somewhere in Colosseum in his own room. She smiled and looked towards the spectator stands. Next match will start in 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. She turned around and hopped back to the doors. The spectators became excited at the upcoming matches and could barely sit still. Isaac stood up from the sofa and glanced at Become a Gladiator, but soon turned around and left the VIP room. He saw enough, and it was something he had never seen before. The trembling of the floor was still making his heart beat rapidly. Ba dump ba thump, who? Isaac took a deep breath and somewhat calmed his heartbeat, even though his fingers were still trembling. Soon, he reached the vast part of the corridor, where NPCs and players were entering both left and right paths. Sir, are you done spectating? The beautiful woman who showed Isaac the way to the VIP room appeared next to him and asked. Yes, Isaac replied and walked past her, making her surprised. Rarely anyone would want to miss a chance to talk with her, but Isaac's thoughts weren't on her. It made her curious, legacy carriers are indeed different. She thought with a lick of her lips. Once Isaac reached the area close to the entrance, he had to walk past NPCs and players that seemed in a hurry to enter the Colosseum. But, while he was walking, he noticed two shady-looking individuals whispering with each other only meter away from him. Isaac stopped and acted like he wasn't listening to them, even though his ears were slightly perked up. Did you hear? A shady-looking figure with a few strands of brown hair peeking through his hood asked. About what? His friend asked, while his concentration was on the beautiful female gladiators. The previous winner received Legacy Quest. He said with a grin and asked, should we go kill him? Why? His friend asked nonchalantly. For fun. He replied with a shrug, it sounds fun, doesn't it? Well, yeah. His friend replied, but then he asked, if I would ask one of those beautiful gladiators out, would they accept? Nah, you ugly. Shit. His friend looked defeated and nodded with the shady-looking figure and entered the left path. Isaac turned around and looked curious, hmm. Those two must be arrogant or stupid. I highly doubt that the brawler will lose, but I kind of want to witness it. He looked around him and followed after the two shady individuals. Chapter 253, Fist of Dominion Creak from a stone wall, an outline of a door suddenly appeared. The corridors were filled with players that were anxious to register as a gladiator, but not even one of them noticed the sudden appearance of a door. The door slowly opened, and a bright light followed. Still, the players looked oblivious and continued walking back and forth in the corridors. Some of them were going to register, and some went to get ready for their upcoming matches that started a few hours later. A player with short black hair and an above-average looking face appeared from the open door. His previous messy hair was long gone, and the prior exhaustion was wiped out from his face. He looked relatively relaxed with a tinge of excitement still left. On top of his head, a name tag floated that was glowing with a golden hue. Fist, after he left the mysterious room, the door disappeared, and the previous stone wall reappeared. The players still had no idea that there was a door only a moment ago. Time to leave. I can't believe I actually received a legacy quest. He clenched his hand into a fist and saw his future becoming much clearer. After he started walking away, finally, players saw him and his name tag. They started pointing at him while whispering with their friends. All of them had obvious greed deep inside their eyes and felt so jealous about Fist's luck. But, all of them hoped to get a similar prize, maybe an even better one. They have no idea how astronomically small the chance of getting Legacy Quest as a reward was. Fist's luck might seem incredible at the moment, but soon they all will understand how unbelievable it indeed was. Fist kept walking with hands on his pockets, 
but soon he passed by two shady-looking individuals who weren't looking at him. He didn't think it was strange because many assassins believe that wearing mysterious dark-colored outfits is cool. When Fist passed them, his senses started screaming in danger, and he couldn't react in time because it came out of nowhere. Stab asterisk one of the shady-looking figures unsheathed their daggers and stabbed it deep inside Fist's waist, piercing through the clothing, armory, flesh, and even bones. Fist's eyes widened in shock, W-Y? He asked while blood flowed out from his mouth. The shady-looking man grinned, for fun. F fun? Fist's face paled, and he had never seen a crazy player like this one. Who in their right mind would attack a fellow player in a city where one wrong move can get them thrown into prison? Another shady-looking person moved next to the fist and touched his shoulder, Soul Suck. Soul Suck used. A terrifying scene happened that caused chills for everyone who saw it. From Fist's avatar, an illusionary ball-like item was getting pulled out. When it was pulled out, it looked like Fist's body was getting stretched. His flesh was moving uncomfortably like his flesh was made out of gum. Minus 99 HP. Minus 99 HP. Fist saw rows of notifications popping up before him, and his HP was almost instantly reduced by half. Enough. He screamed after understanding what was currently happening to him. The shady-looking individuals were hell-bent on killing him, but he wasn't planning to make it easy for them. Out of nowhere, he grabbed the dagger and pulled it away from his flesh. The shady-looking man looked surprised, but then Fist pulled his head back before smashing it in front of him. Bam! The shady-looking man was thrown at the stone wall by Fist's headbutt. Ah! His nose broke with blue blood dripping down from his nose. His friend looked surprised, but then he came face to face with Fist's own fist. His friend couldn't even blink and was struck by the fist. Smack! Bam! Asterisk his body crashed onto the stone wall with a mouthful of saliva leaving his mouth. Players around them noticed the scene. The guards saw it as well, but they didn't move an inch and didn't have any intention of stopping them. The shady looking guys gritted their teeth after their assassination attempt failed, but they had no intention of giving up so quickly. Swoosh! Asterisk suddenly, both of them disappeared. Stealth used. Stealth used. Fist widened his eyes in shock and anxiously looked around him. But they didn't see nothing except a crowd of players looking at him with amused gazes and stone walls. But then, his senses started ringing. It was like when he first got attacked, his senses were telling him to dodge. Fist jumped to the side with the help of his senses and saw his previous spot being assaulted by a rain of daggers. Dagger rain used. In the stone ceiling, Two shady-looking guys were hanging with their daggers dug inside the ceiling cracks. They managed to barely keep hanging with the help of their daggers, but then they saw Fist's enraged eyes looking straight towards them. Not good, run! The shady-looking guy screamed and jumped out of the way before Fist could do anything. Fist's right hand started glowing in crimson, making the environment hotter with each passing second. Fist of crushing! His powerful scream echoed in the corridors, and he did a powerful uppercut. The crimson light flew straight towards the ceiling from his fist, destroying it into pieces. Boom crash! The ceiling fell apart, sending broken stone around the corridor. A dust cloud appeared around the crash site, making the previous stuffed air even stuffier. Cough the players started coughing and tried to wave their hands to get rid of the dust. Ha! Ha! Fist wiped his sweat and looked around him, but the shady-looking guys were nowhere to be seen. All the players around him had no intention of helping. Instead, they felt annoyed by Fist's presence because they were already jealous of his luck. Inside their hearts, the desire to see Fist dead was sprouting. Fist saw their eyes and felt enraged. You guys want me to die because of the luck I had? This is so unfair. You all are terrible. His left hand started glowing in light blue. The temperature around the corridor became freezing cold. The players surprisingly felt the cold and wondered where the hell the sudden cold came from. You guys want me to die? His shout was heard by everyone, fine, but you guys will die as well. The players looked surprised and saw Fist punching the stone ground. Fist of Dominion. Bam! Chapter 254 
Was that Wraith? From the floor, a ice started forming. The ice quickly started spreading everywhere in the corridor, freezing everything in sight. The players' legs turned into ice, earning shocked screams from them. The guards and the rest of the Colosseum workers easily jumped over the ice and managed to dodge the ice with relative ease. The floor and ceiling became fully covered in a thick layer of ice. Hey, you bastard! The players started screaming angrily. Get rid of the ice, or I will kill you. F fuck. Why doesn't the ice break? Hey, help me get rid of the ice, I will fucking kill this bastard. Fist ignored the angry screams and managed to see a few shadowy figures jumping over the players. His eyes turned cold, and he disappeared from his previous spot, only leaving a layer of ice behind. Fist suddenly appeared in midair, right in front of the shadowy figures. Stealth disappeared, and two shady-looking guys appeared with pale faces. HMPH. Fist reeled in his fist and punched forwards, sending a shockwave powerful enough to send them flying to the ice floor. Bam bam asterisk 2. Shady-looking figures crashed on the floor in the middle of angry-looking players. Fist once again was about to unleash another punch, but then his senses started screaming danger. Swoosh asterisk from a dozen meters from him, an archer sent a simple-looking arrow flying towards him but the arrow's tip was oozing with a greenish glow. The arrow was poisoned. Fist paled and knew that he couldn't dodge mid-air. He closed his eyes and waited for the inevitable death to dawn upon him. But then, bang! The sound of a gun firing echoed in the loud corridors. The sound of firing silenced every scream, and it was like the only thing in existence was that bullet. The bullet flew through the air and pierced the arrow from the middle. The arrow broke from the middle and fell down to the ice floor. Who? The archer screamed and looked behind him, where a white-haired youth was holding a gun unfamiliar to him. Don't intervene with the battle. Isaac said calmly, it's bad manners. Who the hell do you think you are? The archer screamed and sent another poison arrow to fly straight towards Isaac. Sigh. Isaac sighed with disappointment and sidestepped. The arrow brushed past his face and his face still had the same calmness. Fist and the archer looked surprised at the fluidity of his movements. Isaac aimed the gun towards the archer and squeezed the trigger, bye. Bang! The bullet flew like a rocket and, in a split second, had already pierced through the archer's face. Spurt! The archer's head exploded out of nowhere, sending a rain of blue blood flying. The players, who were already annoyed at getting their legs frozen, were now even angrier. The blood splattered on their faces. Fist widened his eyes in shock and couldn't comprehend what he saw. With such a simple motion, the archer died without being able to fight back. Taking the situation to their advantage, the two shady-looking guys stood up and started running away, but Fist saw it. Fist's eyes became cold, and he jumped after them. The shady-looking guys looked behind them and paled after seeing the incarnation of destruction following after them. W. Wait. One of them tried to reason with a fist but was hit by his fist as a result. Spurt. His head exploded, and with having no idea what happened, he turned into pixels and disappeared from the world of white. Only one shady-looking guy was left, but he couldn't run far away. Once Fist's kick landed on his back, his spinal cord broke in half, and he couldn't even scream before turning into pixels. Fist landed on the ground and turned around but didn't see the white-haired youth anymore. He had disappeared, leaving no traces behind, but Fist managed to see his face. Was that... Wraith? Isaac left the Colosseum and saw the carnage outside. If previously was terrible, now it was even worse. More and more players had entered the game, and the area around Colosseum was literally brimmed to the fullest. It took Isaac close to half an hour of pushing past anxious-looking players. Once he reached the streets, he took a sigh of relief. His white hair had become messy with disheveled clothing. The streets were pretty empty, but he could hear the screams coming from the Colosseum. It was like he was standing right next to a very loud concert. After catching his breath, he continued walking in the relatively empty streets. Every now and then, he managed to see NPCs working in their own shops that were completely empty. 
The stores that were full only a day ago are now completely empty. Isaac thought that it wouldn't last long. The hype around Colosseum will last for a week at best until the ordinary daily routine reappears. But, it still doesn't mean that the shops will be as popular as before. The Colosseum instead will always be popular. The players who are doing good in Colosseum can earn wealth and fame, which will take them to the top, but the losing punishment was still unknown. If it is heavy punishment, many will have to reconsider whether they will try. That was one of the reasons Isaac didn't go try. The punishment can be so severe that his growth will completely stop for a week. He didn't want to take the risk and wait till players share it on forums. Inside the Colosseum, he had already thought about his next destination. Realm portals. Walking past several blocks, he reached the city square, where four unknown stone doors were. Around the doors, four guards were standing in front of the doors. NPCs and players who happened to walk past were confused about the stone doors. Isaac, on the other hand, knew exactly what they were. He sat down on the bench, while the four stones were only ten meters away from him and four different roads that leave out from the city square and fashionable buildings surrounding the city square. The city square, which was usually full has barely enough space to walk unhindered, was now completely empty. With few random NPCs every now and then walking past the city square or players who were running towards Colosseum. Chapter 255, Revisiting Isaac left the city square after admiring the sight of realm portals long enough. For now, he had no plan of wasting half of his wealth to go visit on Moon City. But, he has a destination in his mind. He remembers talking with Darth about having special bullets, but he had given up on that after getting a special mythical weapon that doesn't need bullets. Instead, he thought maybe he would be able to get potions. It was a long shot but he decided to test his luck and maybe get a few healing potions or pay for them. He remembered most of the path after once following behind Redless, who was the one that showed him the way to the Black Arrow building. Soon, he reached the Black Arrow building, which looked exactly the same as previously. Nothing had been changed, except the guild building was almost entirely empty. Isaac thought it wasn't strange because almost all the players went to check World Bank and Coliseum. The shouts and cheers coming from Colosseum could still be heard clearly. It wasn't strange that almost everyone wanted to visit it after feeling their blood boiling in excitement. Isaac entered the guild building, and the first thing he saw was the empty lounge area, which was the last time he had visited completely full of guild members from Black Arrow and Golden Crown. However, the place wasn't completely empty. Behind the front desk, a beautiful young woman with auburn hair tied in a ponytail was sitting with boredom. She was messaging with her friends about how much it sucks to stay behind as a receptionist. She could hear the excitement in the voices that were coming from Colosseum. Above her, a name tag was floating. Luminous, this sucks. I want to go there. Looking at her friend's messages about how amazing the Colosseum was made her even angrier. She started feeling regretful about ever joining Black Arrow Guild. She was a mere outer member who had zero influence in the guild itself. Core members were the commanders, while outer members were foot soldiers. The difference in the hierarchy was massive. She wasn't concentrating on the duty she was supposed to do. That's why she didn't notice a white-haired youth appearing in front of the desk. Tap Tap Luminous flinched after hearing the sudden sound of tapping and became pale. She hoped that it wasn't one of the core members because most of them are very uptight and might get angry at her for not doing her job correctly. She looked at the finger that was tapping the desk with shaky eyes. The finger was very delicate and looked like something that was never used to do anything manual labor. When she raised her head, her eyes widened in shock after recognizing the youth. W. W. Wraith. She gasped in shock. Is everyone out? Isaac asked and looked towards upstairs, which had lights out. Why, yes. Luminous replied with high pitched tone. Can I meet with guard, or has he left as? Well? Isaac asked after remembering the Black Arrow's potion master. Guard was the old man he met when he visited the Black Arrow Guild's basement with Darth. Well, he hasn't left yet. She replied and, with a stutter, continued, H he doesn't leave his workspace. Hmm, can I meet him? Isaac asked one more time. 
luminous brows furrowed, and her eyes closed as she thought about what her guildmaster said about letting someone enter. Rarely anyone outside the guild members can visit the basement because top secret stuff was created there. But, Wraith was commonly known as guildmaster's and vice guildmaster's friend. She made up her mind and nodded vigorously, sure. Isaac sighed in relief and nodded at her. Do you know the way? She asked while watching Isaac walking past the desk and going straight towards the door that leads to the basement. Yes, thank you. Isaac opened the door and saw the stairway in front of him. He closed the door behind him and slowly walked down the stairways. Soon, he reached the bottom, and the four doors became visible. On the ceiling, one of a kind blue crystal was hanging from the ceiling. That sight made Isaac surprised. He stopped to look at the blue crystal and wondered where they got one. He remembered that nobles and royal families commonly used the blue crystals, but this was the first time seeing one in possession of a player. Hmm. Isaac walked past the blue crystal and arrived in front of the second door. There was a drawing of a glass bottle on the door, which made Isaac remember that it was the second room where guard was. Knock knock he used his knuckles and knocked several times. After that, he started waiting patiently. His heartbeat didn't accelerate in pace, instead was steady and calm. He calmly waited and soon received the answer he was waiting for. Come in. An aged voice came from inside the room. Isaac grabbed the door handle and opened the door wide open. The room was surprisingly clean, with grey-coloured walls and clean metallic tables surrounding the room. Behind one of the tables, an old man with grey hair and a messy beard poured green liquid inside one of the bottles. Tiny beads of sweat drops tickled down his aged face, and his eyes showed absolute concentration on the task at hand. Isaac quietly entered the room and closed the door behind him. He slowly moved to the side, trying not to interrupt Guard in any way. Soon, Guard had finished pouring half of the liquid. Several minutes later, the rest of the liquid was neatly on the bottle. Guard sighed in relief and grabbed a cork. He closed the top of the bottle with the cork, and the previous fresh scent coming from the liquid disappeared. He took a sniff of satisfaction, and once he opened his eyes, he saw a somewhat unfamiliar-looking white-haired young man standing in the room. Hmm? Guard frowned and remembered him. Why are you here? No one beside core members should be allowed here. The receptionist allowed me. I visited once here before, with Darth. Isaac thought he didn't remember him, so he tried to freshen up his memory. Hmm. Guard hummed and asked, What do you want? Is it possible to buy healing potions? He asked and anxiously waited for the answer. Chapter 256, Guard's Path. No. Guard bluntly said. Why? Isaac asked with disappointment visible on his face. They are made specially for core members and for rewards. Guard grabbed the glass bottle and put it on the rack, where dozens of other glass bottles were. After sudden appearance of level rankings in Colosseum, everyone is desperate for healing potions. All core members try to reach top 100 in rankings and make a name for themselves and for the guild. Also, Colosseum doesn't forbid the usage of healing potions that's why they are more important than ever before. He sighed and looked Isaac right in the eye, also. One day, you could become our rival, like what happened in Duo. Dungeon. Isaac bit his lip and nodded with understanding, all right. He turned around and walked towards the door. When his hand touched the door handle and was about to leave, Guard spoke again. I might not be able to make healing potions for you, but there is something I can give you. Isaac turned around and looked curious but also confused. Guard grabbed an antique-looking map from the table and threw it towards Isaac. Isaac barely managed to grab the thin map that almost floated away. The map had obvious signs of being a treasure map, with a Mark 10 on the center of the map. The map showed the vast city of Stronglord and also the Beast Forest, but the X mark was somewhere he didn't expect. It was in the middle of the road that led to the Beast Forest. A. Hey. Isaac became even more confused and wondered what this was. I received it for class quest, Guard replied. I haven't had time to visit that place yet, and I am not very interested either. You can have this as thank you. Thank you? Isaac frowned and wondered why he received words of gratitude from the old man. 
Remember the fox beast's tail you gave us? He asked. Isaac nodded. It was the rare item he received and sold it for Black Arrow Guild. I managed to increase my potion mastery and managed to increase my potion making speed by 10%. Isaac looked surprised and didn't think it would have such a big effect. So, this will be my thanks. Guard said, but then reminded him, don't get your hopes up. I don't know what is hidden there. It might be something useful or useless. Isaac looked at the map and nodded, I will go check it. Guard nodded and waved his hand, now, go. I am busy. All right, thanks. Isaac opened the door and closed it behind him. Once he left, Guard stopped working for several minutes. Ever since he met Isaac, he had a weird feeling in his stomach. His potion master abilities are trying to force themselves out. What is happening? He rubbed his stomach and grimaced. Why? Is there something wrong with him? Or why are my instincts telling me to improve my skills so I can help him in the future? He sat down on the chair, and another stomach ache assaulted him. Arg! He grabbed his stomach and almost puked his organs out, I understand. I will help him to get rid of his curse. Inside him, a certain voice kept speaking with him. Good. This is what your purpose was. To help make humanity's path easier. Helping him will be the first step, but it is by no means the last step. I understand. Guard took a deep breath, and his stomach ache disappeared. But, a holographic screen was right in front of him that made his path clear. Legacy, Isaac Newton, Legacy Rank, Mythical, Isaac exited the building while the player Luminous waved behind him. Her friends smugly talked with her about the festive feeling of the Colosseum, obviously trying to make her jealous, but now she can brag as well. She can say that she met with Wraith. While walking in the streets, Isaac remembered his discussion with Guard. He stored the map in the safest place he knew, his inventory. He thought it was strange for Guard to give him something valuable like a class quest item. Isaac knows how important they are, especially because he received his camouflage outfit, which he has been using ever since. Well, he seemed to be very obsessed with increasing his potion master skills. Maybe he found out that the map was useless for that purpose. He shrugged and could only guess. He didn't plan on going to the place where the treasure map was pointing at. Instead, it was time to visit the last destination. World Bank. After walking past multiple blocks, he reached the area close to the World Bank. He managed to see a beautiful and luxurious bank that screamed the word wealth. In and out, players kept moving rapidly. Some looked excited and couldn't believe the amount of money they received. While some were desperate after earning a few cents. Remembering how difficult it was to earn those white coins made them even more desperate. There was a way to gain wealth, but to do that, they needed to increase their levels somehow and managed to hunt beasts before other players did. Beast Forest was always fully packed with players, making hunting extremely difficult. Some of the weaker player hasn't even gotten one kill in their stay in Beast Forest. Also, after killing the beast, they need to gather somehow the items the beast drops before they get stolen or get themselves killed by other jealous players. The poor players looked at the rich players with obvious jealousy and desperately wanted to be like them. Isaac walked past the jealous players and reached the entrance of the World Bank. He managed only to see the lounge area, but it was massive. There was a waiting room in the lounge area that was made out of soft and expensive looking couches and tables. The players that were waiting for their turn almost fell asleep. They have never felt as comfortable. On the other end of the lounge area, Two stairway goes straight to the second floor, which was reserved for nobles and truly wealthy customers. Next to the stairs, hundreds of counters were located. Behind the counters, NPCs talked with nervous looking players that were sitting on the other side of the counter. Most of the discussions only took several minutes before the player left the counter with either excited or despairing faces. Chapter 257 World Bank Account After seeing all the counters being full, Isaac went to the waiting area, where a dozen other players were already waiting. They were either enjoying the soft cushioning of the couch or reading magazines found on the tables. Isaac quickly found a place to sit at. He was alone on the couch, where he decided to sit, while other couches around him were filled with players. 
The players noticed him arriving and looked surprised to see his face, but that was the only thing that attracted their attention. They couldn't completely pinpoint who he could be because Isaac's face was still somewhat unknown, and the only way Fist managed to know who he was was because of the class and a look that resembled a lot of the face seen in the stream clip. Especially the white hair and outfit. For some reason, name tags weren't visible inside World Bank, making it even harder for others to know his identity. Isaac thought that it was a safety mechanic to deposit or withdraw money safely without other players targeting them because they knew their player tag. Isaac grabbed a magazine from the table and casually started reading, but the first page talked about yesterday's party. Most of the players looked very interested while reading about the royal party, and so was Isaac. The article talked about the royal family mostly, but at the bottom of the page, there was something about godly and mythical legacy carrier appearing at the party. When other players saw it, they were utterly shocked and couldn't believe that there were already players that had received those kinds of legacies. They felt incredible envy and tried to find their identity but couldn't find it anywhere. Godly legacy carrier. Right, Luna got one. Isaac thought. While they were talking, she mentioned about receiving the legacy from Hecate, and Isaac was rather shocked but thought it would make sense. Half an hour later and after finishing reading the magazine, one of the counters became empty, and Isaac saw that no one had noticed it yet. He closed the magazine and put it back on the table before standing up and casually walking towards the counter. Few of the players noticed it and debated whether they should try running and stealing the counter from the white-haired youth, but their thoughts lasted too long, and they noticed they would never make it in time. They could only sigh with frustration and wait for another counter to become empty. Isaac arrived at the counter and sat down. Welcome to World Bank of Stronglord, how may I help you? A professional-looking NPC asked with a somewhat pleasant voice. He was blonde-haired with glasses and a suit that fit him nicely. Um. Isaac didn't know how the banks in White Online worked and wished for NPC to explain how the bank operates a little bit better. The NPC saw his dilemma and continued talking, Do you want to deposit, withdraw, apply for a loan or make your own World Bank account? Hmm. Isaac pondered and thought that making his own account sounds nice. Account. He replied. The NPC nodded. He didn't even need to do anything after suddenly a holographic screen appeared in front of Isaac. Name, age, credit card, number. Isaac quickly wrote his name, which was Isaac Whitelock. He knew instantly that his account would be connected with his real-life bank account. Once he finished filling up all the spots, the holographic screen disappeared. Do you wish to deposit or withdraw? The NPC asked politely. Hmm. Isaac pondered for a minute and decided to ask, what use does it have? The NPC smiled and said, if you decide to deposit, your money will be completely safe, without worry about having bad luck and losing all your white coins after death or getting robbed. Hmm. Isaac knew that players could lose white coins if they died, but that needs some really bad luck. Also, if he dies, he has a lot bigger concerns than white coins, like losing his legacy. But, he could get robbed by thief class players, they have become infamous for doing it, and he can already guess that they are going on a rampage. Sure, I will deposit 50,000 white coins, Isaac replied. Ding ding, you deposited 50,000 white coins on Isaac Whitelock's World Bank account. Thank you, sir. The NPC bowed, and that was a signal for Isaac to leave there were many impatient players already waiting. Isaac stood up, and when he was walking away from the counters, behind him, three players rushed towards the counter, and the player with the highest agility stat managed to reach the seat first. That player, of course, didn't forget to boast about it by showing middle fingers towards the slower players, who had no other choice than to grit their teeth and plan their revenge. Isaac left the bank and walked down the long white marbled stairs. Once his feet touched the ground, he turned left and slowly strolled in the streets, but then gallop he heard the sound of galloping coming in front of him. Isaac frowned and saw two horses that were dragging carriage behind coming towards him with full speed. His eyes widened in shock, and he quickly jumped out of the road towards the sidewalks and was only a second away from getting flattened by the horses. Watch out! The carriage driver didn't forget to shout, you moron! TCH. 
Isaac felt annoyed and muttered under his breath, what kind of moron would go full speed on the streets where there could be children or elderly walking? Fucking hell. Soon, the carriage came to a stop in front of an antique shop. The carriage's doors opened, and a fancy-looking noble walked down the short steps. He was pretty tall, around 190 centimeters in height, with proper noble attire and a pair of rings on his fingers. He had blonde hair and a mustache that gave him a look of wealth and nobility. The noble looked right in front of him at the antique shop and tightened his collar before entering the somewhat ordinary-looking shop. The carriage driver took a pack of cigarettes from his pocket and started smoking. The horses had no other choice than inhale the smoke coming from the cigarettes, and because of that, they became restless. Quiet. The carriage driver used his whip and lashed on their buttocks, which made the horses silent. Chapter 258, Yeager's Business Inside the antique shop, the noble with the name of Andrew Searward walked towards the front desk. Once he was in front of the desk, he was about to ring the bell. But then a door in the back room opened, and an old man with a somewhat muscular body appeared. Above him, a player tag was floating. Jaeger, ah, you are here. Jaeger walked towards the desk and noticed the noble, whom he had been waiting for nearly an hour by now. Yes, do you have the item? Andrew didn't do small talk and asked for the item he came for. Yes. Jaeger crouched and took a box from below the desk and put it on top of the desk, right in front of Andrew. Andrew started carrying the box and was about to leave, but then he heard the old man's aged voice. Excuse me, sir, can you wait for a second? Jaeger asked calmly. Andrew frowned and waited for the elderly man to say his business to him. I have a certain business idea. Jaeger grabbed a notebook from the desk and opened it. I have plans of opening my guild, which is specially for masterclass users. You must know how useful they are. Andrew nodded but didn't understand what that had to do with him. If that guild becomes big enough, it can revolutionize the way of making money. Jaeger explained calmly, and once he finished telling his business idea, he waited calmly for Andrew's answer. Without money, that idea is useless. Andrew was once again about to leave, but it was what Jaeger waited for. Well, with your help, it might not be a useless idea. Jaeger smiled after seeing the noble once again stopping. Hmm. Andrew turned around to look at the old man, is that so? How are you planning to fight against top guilds' territories? They have a big head start. I thought about opening the shop in Noble Lair. Jaeger quickly continued before getting interrupted. I can take orders from players via forums, etc., and nobles could be very interested in our products. Andrew finally had a tinge of interest in his face. How are you planning to get masterclasses to join your guild, with the help of money? Jaeger shook his head. You are aware that the players aren't exactly. From here? Andrew nodded and knew about the mysterious place where players were from. My subordinates from that place have started recruiting masterclasses, and we already managed to get a level 30 trap master to join our guild. Andrew nodded, and last important question remained, how much would you need? Jaeger sighed in relief and saw the finish line in the distance. One million white coins. That amount of money would be unreal for most of the players, but Jaeger knew that amount of money was nothing for nobles. Just like he expected, Andrew's face didn't change. Only that much. Jaeger smiled and nodded. I can give that much, but you need to repay the amount within one month. Otherwise, you need to pay double the amount back. Jaeger nodded and thought it would make sense. Google, but Andrew wasn't done. Also, I want a 25% share of every product sold. Jaeger became silent and thought about it. He bit his lip and nodded, all right. He needed Andrew more than he needed them. Andrew took a money pouch from his pocket and took one white colored coin from there. He put it on Jaeger's old palm and said, that coin is worth one million. Jaeger looked at the fancy looking coin and knew the value this coin had. In the coin, an outline of a face was shown, which was resembling the lot of Emperor's face. It was the most expensive coin in the Stronglord Empire. When he was about to leave the shop, Andrew turned around and said, I will keep an eye on your business. I will give your guild one of my family's buildings, and I will talk with Emperor about your guild moving to Noble Lair. Thank you, sir. 
Jaeger bowed respectfully, and soon, the door opened and closed. After seeing the noble leaving, he cheered silently, yes. The first step completed. Outside the shop. Andrew grimaced after the puff of smoke reached his nose. He waved his hand, trying to get rid of the smoke. With displeasure, he looked at the carriage driver. Who didn't seem to care? Andrew, with annoyance opened the door to the carriage and entered. Let's go. He said impatiently. Search the carriage driver looked annoyed and had to throw away the cigarette. Crack with a crack of a whip, the horses started galloping away. The carriage soon started rushing towards their next destination. Soon, the carriage passed a white-haired youth who was walking alone towards almost the same destination as the carriage. Isaac frowned and saw how the carriage driver turned his head towards him and smirked. I will be waiting for the day when carriages are useless. He already smiled at the sight of the carriage drivers despairing after their business had run out. Soon, Isaac reached the gates of Stronglord City, and just like before, carriages and their drivers were gathered around the area, waiting for anyone to order a ride. Most of them noticed Isaac arriving, and after seeing his fancy outfit, they grinned internally. Hey, do you want to rent a driver for 10,000 white coins, what do you say? One of the carriage drivers shouted with a grin, one time offer. Isaac ignored it and went straight towards the gates. The carriage drivers looked enraged after getting ignored. Pay, or you won't be able to come back, ever again. Fuck you. Isaac's words stunned everyone, and once they got over their shock, they wanted to threaten them with their angry red faces, but he had already left the city. Tell guards not to let him come back. Fucking arrogant players. While walking further away from the gates, Isaac knew what they were planning to do and simply didn't care. After yesterday, he understood his legacy's value and was sure that he would be able to go back to the Stronglord City, and the carriage drivers couldn't do anything about it. But for now, he has other worries. He grabbed a thin piece of map from his inventory and sighed, I really hope there is something useful. Chapter 259, Flower of Dreams Isaac was walking calmly on the dirt road with the lush forest surrounding him. His ears perked up every now and then after the sound of beast roaring reached his ears. He also heard the sound of battling, which surprised Isaac. Some players are in the beast forest. Using the Colosseum's distraction to their advantage and level up rapidly. Smart. He even felt tempted to try to hunt beasts by himself but he had something else to do. The thin piece of the map was lying on top of his palm while he was carefully counting the steps he had to make to reach the place with the X mark. Soon, his feet came to a halt as he noticed something in the distance. From the dirt road, a flower was sprouting innocently. The flower swayed back and forth. Isaac looked at the map and was sure that he had reached the place with the X mark. He stored the map inside his inventory and crouched in front of the flower. He carefully unrooted the flower without destroying it. Once the flower was carefully standing on top of his palm, it started suddenly glowing and started changing shapes. Swoosh asterisk the flower became a green colored box with flower patterns on the side. It's light. Isaac muttered under his breath and decided to open the box. He touched the side of the box and found a tiny button that opened the box. Clink the top of the box became a jar allowing Isaac barely to peek inside, but then he used his fingers and opened it fully. Inside the box, Isaac saw a square-shaped glass box with another flower inside. The flower was preserved nicely like it had been taken out from nature only a second ago. Another flower? A frown found its way to his face, and he wondered what was so special about the ordinary-looking flower that was mostly in the color of green and had petals in the shade of pink. Ding ding! Flower of Dreams Acquired Flower of Dreams, Special Ingredient for Special Potion Ding Ding, Secret Quest Activated Create a Special Potion Ingredients 1 -fifth, Flower of Dreams Acquired Root of Dreams Needed Resin of Dreams Needed Leaves of Dreams Needed Oil of Dreams Needed Google, Secret Quest Isaac looked at all the ingredients needed and had a weird feeling in his stomach, hmm. How am I supposed to get them all? He stored the glass box inside his inventory and decided to take a look at the items at a later date. He stood up and started walking back to the Stronglord. This time, 
he jogged after finding out that it took him nearly an hour to walk to the X mark and didn't want to spend that much time making the return trip. After half an hour, he saw the gates in the distance. Next to the gates, two guards suddenly unsheathed their swords and blocked the gateway. Behind the gates, the carriage driver snickered while looking at Isaac mockingly. Isaac frowned and came to a stop. You are not permitted to enter turn around, now. The guards took a decisive step forwards and shouted. Isaac raised his head so that the guards could see his eyes. Search the guards frowned and looked at his beautiful gray eyes, but their eyes soon widened in shock, and their faces pale like they had seen a ghost. Under shocked gazes of the carriage drivers, they stepped to the side and sheathed their swords. Isaac walked past them and entered Stronglord. What are you idiots doing? The carriage drivers didn't look pleased after seeing Isaac entering the city unhindered. There were around eight carriage drivers around the area, and all of them had the look of displeasure. Isaac looked at them and did something that enraged them further. He winked with his right eye. They couldn't see it properly, but they thought they also saw a slight smirk on his face. They started bothering the guards, but they didn't move even an inch, and even though they had to be respectful of the carriage drivers and listen to them. In their minds, they were nothing compared to legacy carriers. Inside the real world. Isaac? Madison entered the mansion through the front door and saw the quiet mansion. Outside the mansion, the servants were busy cleaning and painting the mansion's walls, which had lost their previous color. Inside the mansion, Madison took off her jacket and her shoes. Once she reached the living room, which was completely empty, she heard footsteps nearing her. She turned around and saw Sebastian walking down the stairs while carrying two wooden stools. Sebastian, do you know where Isaac is? Young master should be in his room, Sebastian replied and went to the front door. He used his elbow and opened the front door, but before leaving the mansion, he bowed towards Madison and then finally left. Madison walked up the stairs, all the way to the third floor. Once she reached the third floor, she could already see Isaac's room and the dim light that was shown underneath the door. She opened the door and first didn't see anyone in the room. He is not here? She thought aloud, but then she saw something in the bed. Oh, he was here. She closed the door and went to bed. Once she was next to the bed, she widened her eyes in surprise after noticing the skin suit. What is this? She touched the soft texture of the skin suit and wondered what it was made from. She had never felt such a sensation before. Her gaze was then locked at the headgear covering certain white-haired youth's eyes. Ring suddenly her attention shifted to her phone, which suddenly started ringing. She took her phone from her pocket and noticed the phone call coming from her friend Layla. She accepted the phone call and put it in her ear, Layla, what is it? Finally, you answered. I visited your mansion, and apparently, you visited the company? Yes. I went there with Malcolm, but he has currently something to do, and I have already returned to the mansion. Madison knew that Layla won't call for something unimportant, is something wrong? No, but Marshall's daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter had come to visit, and we were invited. Do you want to come? Why did we get invited? Madison asked with a surprise, I thought they would want to spend time with only them. Not sure, but Marshall wanted us to be there. Ah. Madison looked at her grandson, who didn't seem to hurry to log out. Sure, I will be there. Chapter 260, Spellcasters vs. Swordsmen After leaving the area that carriage drivers occupied, Isaac continued walking in the empty streets. Soon, his feet came to a halt as he saw a strange sight. Ten meters away from him, a players with pink robes and a lip symbol was running like they were possessed. Isaac frowned and looked where they ran towards and noticed that the road was taking to the slum area. Seeing how they were running made him curious, and Isaac's adventurous spirit rose as he decided to follow after them. He leapt and landed on top of a nearby building. He used the roofs of the buildings as his foothold and soon caught up with the players but stealthily followed after them. Once they reached the slums, the pink-robed players were still running past the abandoned buildings. Soon, however, Isaac noticed another strange sight. Two different colored groups were gathered in a spacious area with four abandoned buildings surrounding the place. One of the groups had pink robes, 
while the other one had blue robed and a sword symbol on the back. Both groups had a single figure in the front as their leader. The one wearing pink robes was Guild Master of Pink Spellcasters with the name of Pink Lotus. He had short pink hair with a feminine look on his face and delicate eyebrows and eyelashes. The one wearing blue robes was a guild master of blue swordsman with the name of Quick Blue. He was an average looking man with jet black hair and an athletic build. You bastards! Quick Blue shouted after seeing everyone had gathered, you dare to copy our guild name? Are you courting death? Pink Lotus roared in laughter alongside his followers. Quick Blue's eyebrow twitched in annoyance, and his hand touched the hilt of his sword, stop laughing. Pink Lotus wiped his tears and said, We copied you losers? Ha ha ha, you guys copied us. Ha ha. Quick Blue laughed mockingly, We were one second faster when we created our guild. Lies. Pink Lotus looked enraged, alongside his followers. Blue fuckers. The members of Pink Spellcasters started shouting. Blue color sucks. Blue? More like Yule. After hearing the insults, Blue Swordsmen fought back with their own insults. Have you guys looked at the mirror? You guys look like a gay band. Pink is inferior red. Fuck, I almost vomited just at the sight of you. Rain of insults came from each side. While on top of one of the buildings, Isaac looked at the sight with dead looking eyes. Are they idiots? Soon afterwards, the groups had to catch their breath after insulting for several minutes without stopping. Fine. Want to decide this once and for all? Pink Lotus shouted. What do you suggest? Quick Blue asked with an exhausted look on his face. You versus me. Let's decide this old school, fight to the death. Ha, fine by me. Quick Blue unsheathed his sword and confidently grinned, don't cry when you lose. Ha. Pink Lotus grabbed a pink-colored cane from his robes and tapped the ground several times, earthquake. Suddenly, the earth around the area started shaking, almost making both sides to fall down on their butts. Quick Blue quickly jumped into the air and shouted, Sword Victory. The tip of his sword started glowing in a color of light blue. Once he finished his sword swing, a ray of sword beam left his sword and rushed straight towards Pink Lotus. Earth Wall Pink Lotus slammed the cane in front of him, and suddenly a wall made a brownish color appeared in front of him. Crash asterisk the sword ray effortlessly destroyed the earth wall, but when it appeared in front of Pink Lotus, he swung his cane and destroyed the weakened sword ray. He used earth wall to decrease the strength of the sword ray and used a cane to finally destroy it. Even though their reasoning for the guild wars was utterly idiotic, he is a good player. But, soon laughter escaped his mouth several times after seeing how the group still threw insults at each other. In his eyes, it looked like a comedic show. But then, one of the pink-robed spellcasters noticed Isaac. She had an adorable face and looked to be around fourteens. She curiously walked towards the abandoned building and climbed on top, where Isaac was sitting. Once she climbed on top of the roof, she sat down next to Isaac, who didn't mind her sudden appearance. Who are you, and what are you doing here? She asked curiously. Wraith and I saw the commotion, so I decided to check it out, Isaac replied and looked at her player tag. I love pink. She nodded and thought that the name sounded familiar but couldn't pinpoint where she heard it. Who do you think will win? She asked curiously. The swordsman, Isaac replied and stood up. Why? I love pink asked curiously. They are fighting in close quarters. I don't know why your guildmaster isn't trying to make a distance to his opponent. Well, he is an idiot. Peefed. A laughter escaped Isaac's mouth after the unexpected words coming from the girl, who he thought was another idiot belonging to guild called Pink Spellcasters. They will start a guild war from smallest things. She looked frustrated as she continued, even if someone accidentally bumps at them. Sigh. Why are you part of the guild then? Well, they are still my friends, and it is quite fun to be with these idiots. She chuckled, and even though she sometimes hated their idiocy, she still enjoyed their company. Isaac nodded and turned around to leave. You won't stay to watch who will win. I love Pink turned her body halfway and asked curiously. The swordsman will win with the next strike, Isaac said and jumped off the building, 
suddenly disappearing without leaving any traces behind. She widened her eyes in shock and turned around to look at the battle. Currently, Quick Blue again destroyed Pink Lotus' earth wall and appeared right before him. Pink Lotus gritted his teeth, and the tip of the cane started glowing in brownish color as he shouted, Earth Birth. The ground below them started quaking, and everyone could tell that something terrifying was about to come from underneath. But then, Quick Blue grinned and shouted, Swords Victory. Once again, the tip of the sword started glowing in light bluish colors. Pink Lotus widened his eyes in shock and screamed internally, I won't make it in time. Die! Quick Blue swung his sword, and the surroundings became quiet. Everyone witnessed how the sword effortlessly sliced through Pink Lotus' throat. Pink Lotus gritted his teeth, and his eyes looked dead after his head suddenly became airborne and flew straight towards his guild members. Guild Master! Members of Pink Spellcaster screamed in horror, and one of them managed to catch their guild master's head. But then, the head turned pixels alongside the rest of Pink Lotus' body. Ha ha! Victory! Quick Lotus' shout of victory caused ear-deafening screams from his guild members. I love Pink Side, oh! He died again. She pouted after remembering that this was the second time her guild master had died. Before, he had Resurrection Pearl. Pink Lotus managed to find it and was excited because of it. Especially his guild members, but then. He died in an idiotic manner after accidentally falling down from the cliff and had to use the pearl to resurrect himself. Chapter 261, Snowflowers In front of a large five-floor mansion, a car entered the premises through the open gates. Once the car stopped in front of the front door, a beautiful elderly woman exited the vehicle and saw her friend already waiting for her. Madison. Layla shook hands. With Madison. Layla. Madison nodded and looked at the massive mansion, I wonder why we were invited here. One way to find out. Layla reached the front door and tried to open it. Surprisingly, the door wasn't locked. She opened it wide open and entered the mansion with Madison. They took off their jackets and shoes. Once they were done, they wondered where Marshall and everyone were. But then they heard the distinct sound of talking coming from the massive living room with a fireplace, several couches, a TV, dining table, and bookshelves. Once they reached the living room, they noticed three figures speaking. One of them was an old man who still had some signs of handsomeness left. He had grayish hair and with a somewhat wrinkly face. The woman he was speaking with was his daughter, Mariah Snowflower. She had a mature feeling around her with a beautiful face and bright blue eyes. Her face had a slight smile, which gave her a look of gentleness, but deep inside her eyes, some signs of worry and exhaustion were visible. The third figure was a serious-looking man with short black hair and grayish eyes. His build was quite athletic, with chiseled muscles and broad shoulders. He was Snowflower family's son-in-law, Sin Snowflower. Marshall turned his head towards the living room's entrance and saw two elderly yet beautiful women appearing. Madison, Layla. He stood up and shook their hands with gratitude. Marshall. Madison smiled and nodded. She sat down on the couch next to her, and Layla sat right next to her. Marshall sat back down next to his daughter and said, You two must be curious why I asked you two here. Madison and Layla nodded. Mariah smiled and bowed. My name is Mariah Snowflower. Nice to meet you, madams. Nice to meet you. They greeted back with gentle looks, knowing that she was the one who kept company with Marshall after her mother and his wife died. Sin nodded simply moved his head down and up, trying to imitate nodding motion, but it looked slightly stiff. Well then. Marshall locked his hands and started talking, I invited you two for separate reasons. Oh. Madison and Layla looked at each other with surprise. Layla, can we talk privately after dinner? He asked with politeness. Of course. Layla nodded and wondered what the reason for such politeness was. Madison. Malcolm told me yesterday night about your company's plan, Marshall said. Madison looked surprised but didn't think it was weird for him to talk about it with his childhood friend. I have a favor to ask from you. Marshall grabbed his fists in a tight hold and said, My granddaughter. She is spending most of the time in white online, and I hoped you would allow her to enter your guild even though she isn't a masterclass user. Oh! 
Madison had a question, why didn't you ask for Malcolm? Because I know Malcolm would accept. Marshall sighed, I wanted to ask from you because I don't want to cause an argument between two of you because of this matter. Ah, right. Madison straightened her back and thought about it. First, she thought about possible uses his granddaughter would have. What is her class? She asked. Marshall looked at her daughter, Mariah? Spellcaster, Mariah replied and remembered her daughter telling her class when she started playing the first time. Madison nodded, well, I don't know. Marshall sighed and nodded, I understand. It was a selfish request, but I want her to be safe. Well, can I talk with her? Madison asked, I want to see what kind of person she is. Of course. Marshall glanced at the stairs and said, she is currently unpacking, but she must be done soon. Step after the words came out of his mouth, footsteps echoed from the stairs. Speak of the devil. Mariah giggled, and her eyes curved, making her look very gentle. From the stairs, a beautiful black-haired young woman appeared. Her bright blue eyes instantly brightened the atmosphere. She was wearing a beautiful dress that made her look absolutely lovely. The dress was in the color of light blue with snowflake patterns. It reached her knees but left the lower half of her legs wide open. On her feet, there were two T-strap sandals in color black, and her delicate-looking toes were peeking through the gaps of the sandals. I am done. She replied cheerfully and hopped towards the living room, where everyone was waiting. Madison turned her head and widened her eyes in surprise. She managed to recognize her from the way of speaking alone, but when she saw her face, she was a hundred percent certain. Why you? Her voice shook. Luna came to a stop and blinked innocently, yes? Madison stood up, allowing her to see her in the whole glory. Luna blinked several times but soon exclaimed, You are that nice lady from the antique shop. Madison giggled and covered her mouth, small world. Luna hopped towards her, and under the surprised gazes of everyone else in the room, she hugged Madison. Madison gently patted her head and asked, How have you been doing? Good. Luna replied. You um, what is this? Marshall asked while looking back and forth between them, you two know each other? I met this lovely lady in white online, Madison replied. Oh. Marshall was surprised at the coincidence. Layla covered her mouth in surprise, what a coincidence. Luna stopped hugging her and went towards her parents. She sat down right next to Sin and hugged her father's waist, Daddy, you forgot my shampoo. I did? Sin looked surprised and gently patted his daughter's head. I think I packed it in the wrong bag I will check it out later. Luna nodded vigorously and asked from Madison, why have you come here? She spoke her mind out and didn't plan to sound rude, but it would sound blunt to many. But Madison didn't mind and only giggled, hee hee. Your grandfather asked if you could join my guild, and I said you could. Marshall looked surprised and sighed in relief. Guild? Luna pouted and said firmly, I don't wanna. Cough. Marshall started coughing heavily. Madison gently smiled and asked, why? I want to keep adventuring, like Isaac. A shout left her mouth and her inflated cheeks told everyone that she was currently being serious. Sin snapped his head towards her and asked with anxiousness, Isaac? Who? Mariah covered her mouth in shock, El Luna, don't tell me. After hearing the name, Madison thought about her grandson but shook her head and thought it couldn't be him. He is my friend. Luna replied and jumped on top of the couch. He is very awesome and became super famous after defeating many evil orcs while fighting on top of giant centipede. Isn't that extremely exciting? She sat down with an excited look. I also adventured with him once it was very fun. Mariah wanted to stop her from getting excited too much because she had surgery not long ago and still had winter illness. One day, I will do the same. Luna smiled and imagined herself fighting on top of a large creature. Chapter 262, Stupid Winter LLL Ness Inside Marshall's Mansion Yes, I have a scar. Luna showed a little bit of her skin, allowing Madison to see a scar on her waist. It will fade away no need to worry, Madison said gently and looked away from the scar. Luna smiled and nodded vigorously, doctors said the same thing. Apparently, it will fade away till it is almost impossible to see. 
Madison nodded, no worries, it didn't diminish your beauty even the slightest. Hee <laughs> hee. Luna giggled and covered her scar. Madison looked towards the upstairs and wondered what Marshall asked from Layla. After dinner, they left for his office to discuss about his proposition. In the kitchen, Mariah and Sin washed plates while whispering with each other. Did your grandson come to visit? Luna asked curiously and remembered the rocky relationship between Madison and her son. Madison nodded and smiled, he is currently visiting. That's nice. Luna nodded and asked, how did the first meeting go? Madison Riley smiled and crossed her legs, well, we were actually late for the meeting. Oh no. Luna had a thought that the first meeting didn't go too well, but then Madison continued. Plane arrived earlier than expected, but still, the first meeting was quite pleasurable. Madison tapped the side of her thigh and moved strands of hair over her ear. He wasn't someone I expected, but he is definitely our grandson. Luna smiled and patted her knees with excitement, I would like to meet him. Well, do you want to visit us tomorrow? Madison asked. Luna turned around and shouted, Mom, can I go? Sure, honey, Mariah replied and wiped the plate with a towel. Hey! Luna smugly replied and knew that when her mother was busy doing something, her concentration was usually on the task. She probably wasn't even aware that she agreed. Madison smiled and said, well, I guess we will meet you there. Luna nodded vigorously, but then, from the corner of her eyes, she noticed the blank screen of the TV changing. Breaking news. A text appeared on the TV, and colors flashed before an excited-looking middle-aged woman appeared on the screen. Madison curiously looked at the TV and saw the text. Her brows furrowed, and she wondered what it was about. On TV, the middle-aged woman opened her mouth, white online update was something no one expected. Luna's eyes sparkled after hearing the name of white online. On TV, three pictures appeared. One of the pictures was about the massive coliseum that was packed with people. The second picture was about a beautiful building made of golden and white colored marble. The third picture was about doors made of stone. These pictures are about World Arena, World Bank, and Realm Portals. The middle-aged woman shifted the papers in her hands with trembling hands and tried to continue as soon as possible. World Arena appeared and had been the center of the attention with NPC and player population, and there is good reason for it. So far, many players have been worried about dying and losing hard-earned XPs and items, but in the World Arena, you don't need to worry about it. If you lose there, you won't die. Instead, there will be a losing penalty of being unable to move for one hour. The one hour will be spent inside the resting room, where no one has access to, which makes it very safe. For winners in World Arena, there will be rewards. Wheel of Victory decides what the winner gets, and some had received nothing but 100 white coins, but a player called Fist received Legacy Quest. On the TV screen, countless pictures were shown about the Colosseum, and it clearly showed how busy it was. I want to be there. Luna rested her cheek on her palm and sighed deeply, I wonder if he is there. Soon, the middle-aged woman started talking about World Bank. Biggest update was definitely World Bank. She took a deep breath, and even she wanted to quit her job and try her luck in white online, but she knew her gaming talent was non-existent. For news anchors, there will be much more work in the future. Luna kept waiting with a nervous heartbeat, World Bank? What is that? The middle-aged woman continued, from now on. It is possible to change white coins into real-life currency. So far, you can only transfer white coins into real-life currency, but there has been no news about able to transfer real-life currency into white coins. There is a chance that it won't be possible because Arthur obviously doesn't want the game to become pay-to-win. Luna widened her eyes in amazement, woo. Madison smiled and said, world is changing. Luna twiddled with her fingers and nodded, yes. It is. What is wrong? Madison asked after seeing Luna looking down for some reason. It's just that. Luna wanted to open. Her mouth but knew that no words would come out. She shook her head and forced a smile, it's nothing. I am feeling slightly sleepy. I will go rest. It was nice to meet you. She did a final hug and left the living room. 
Madison looked confused after seeing the energetic and lovely girl becoming sad for some reason. On the third floor, Luna entered her room and saw the spacious room that was way too large for someone like her. In the corner of her eyes, tears were brimming, but she quickly wiped them before they could start pouring down. She went to her soft and comfy looking bed and sat right down. On top of the small table, her legendary VR helmet was connected to several wires. She looked at the helmet for several seconds before shaking her head and lying on the bed. Around the bed, the empty and spacious room made Luna feel empty inside. After living in the hospital room for several months, the current room made her feel overwhelmed. World is changing. But, I won't be there to see it. She bit her soft-looking lip, and the tears poured down this time. With a sobbing tone, she continued, stupid winter illness. It was stupid of me to think about getting cured. It is impossible to get cured. She touched her chest and felt her heart beating ever so slowly. Even though the surgery stopped her from feeling the pain for the next several months and slowed down the spreading of winter illness. But, it was still inside her. Slowly creeping towards her heart. Once the winter illness reaches her heart, it is the end of her. Her heart will stop, and not even magic could save her. Chapter 263, Darkseid vs. Queen Diana In the Colosseum The room, where players who decided to become gladiators were bustling with activity. Most of the players sat on the couches and looked at the matches being broadcasted from the holographic screen that was floating in the air. Around one of the larger couches, Black Arrow's core members had gathered. Darth was looking at the current fight with boredom. Players that were currently fighting were one of the weaker sides, and even spectators looked bored after seeing such high-level fights only a moment ago. Queen Diana was sitting right next to him with straightened back, looking very princess-like. Her beautiful face and attractive body caught many eye pairs, but none of them dared to look for too long. After all, she was one of the most famous players in Stronglord. Famous Guild Master of Black Arrow Guild. But then, a voice that made everyone's ears irritated appeared. Ha ha ha. The voice laughed, and soon the figure became visible after appearing right in front of Queen Diana out of nowhere. Wow, I thought I wouldn't be able to meet the Queen bitch, but here she is. Core members of Black Arrow looked enraged after hearing his words. Fuck off, dark side. Darth stood up angrily and shouted at the infamous guild leader of the League of Assassins. Darkseid's laughing face turned into anger, Darth. Don't think even for a second that I have forgotten about the duo dungeon. Ah, right, where is that fucker called Wraith? That cunt has been making a name for himself, it would be such a shame if he would be humiliated in front of thousands of spectators. Back off. Darth's cold voice oozed with killing intent. Darkseid innocently took a step backwards, and suddenly a dozen individuals appeared out of nowhere and gathered around him. Queen Diana seemed calm and asked, What do you want? Darkseid smirked like he had been waiting for that question, Queen bitch, do you want to fight? Just you and me. He licked his lip and brazenly looked at her from head to toe. Why would I do that? Queen Diana asked with a raised eyebrow. He he. Darkseid chuckled and snapped his fingers. Snap suddenly, a floating camera appeared on top of his head that was recording Queen Diana. He is streaming. Darth and the rest of the core members grimaced. You can, of course, refuse. But, then. Everyone knows that you are nothing but cowardly bitch. Darth angrily took a step forwards and shouted, You think you are worthy enough? Fucking hell, even I am enough to defeat you. Next to Darkseid. A man with a dark colored mask and black robes took a step forward. Death Song, underneath his mask, terrifying looking eyes glared at Darth. HMPH, little doggy should stand down. Darth increased the pressure around him and forced Death Song to take a step back. Grr. Death Song suddenly unsheathed his dagger, but Darkseid stopped him. Hey, easy now. Darkseid grinned and whispered something in Death Song's ear that caused him to stop moving. Fine. Queen Diana stood up and said, I will fight you. Guildmaster? Darth exclaimed, and even other core members didn't think it was a good idea. Darkseid grinned and glanced at his chat. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Ha ha ha, kill that bitch. 
Asterisk, 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 asterisk. Kukuku. Humiliate her. Please. Asterisk, 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 asterisk. Bitch is about to get destroyed. Asterisk, 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 asterisk. This is the end of Black Arrow. Coliseum interface. He said with a grin, and suddenly brown colored holographic screen popped out. Ranking, challenge, guild war. Darkseid pressed challenge and wrote Queen Diana's name. Once Queen Diana's name popped up, he pressed send in front of Queen Diana, a notification popped out, and she didn't even look as she pressed, except Darkseid turned around to leave. But before that, he said bone chilling words, good luck. Kukuku, I will enjoy this. He and the rest of the League of Assassins left. Darth snapped his head towards Diana and shouted, You shouldn't have accepted it. He has obviously ulterior motive. Queen Diana sat down and said, I still have my pride as queen. Darth looked frustrated, and when he saw the faces of other core members, he understood that no one was pleased with the sudden turn of events. What is the use of the pride if it makes us lose everything we have worked for? Toby said with an unpleasant look, if you lose. The news will spread in Stronglord, and it is not a good time for it. Darth nodded, our guild started to become more popular after Duo Dungeon, and this must be Darkseid's desperate attempt to salvage the situation. We needed an only week to become a guild that is way above the level of League of Assassins. Toby sighed and rubbed his forehead, now, you have to win. Queen Diana looked calm as she replied, it's fine. I will handle this. Darth wanted to believe that Queen Diana would win, but he had a hunch that Darkseid won't be playing fairly. In front of the Colosseum. The area was crowded with NPCs and players that were trying to enter the Colosseum through the front doors. Suddenly, a white-haired youth entered the Colosseum from the front doors after waiting in the line for nearly half an hour. Isaac once again entered the Colosseum. In the end, I returned. He murmured while walking towards the desk, where handsome-looking Gladiator was waiting. He noticed the white-haired youth walking towards him and instantly straightened his back. He remembered the legacy carrier he met a few hours ago. Isaac nodded at him and entered surprisingly the left path, which leads to the Gladiator area. The Gladiator looked surprised and murmured, is he planning to fight? His eyes widened in shock after realizing what it could mean. Isaac didn't plan necessarily to fight because he still didn't know the losing penalty, but he wanted to see the gladiator area and maybe we'll find out what the losing penalty was. After reaching the end of the corridor, he reached the open space with hundreds of players sitting on couches with their gazes locked on the floating holographic screens. Isaac looked surprised to see there being items that resembled real world's TVs. Chapter 264, First Appearance In the Colosseum the spectator area for players who wanted to become gladiators were bustling with activity. Currently, most of them were looking straight at the floating holographic screens, where the endgame of the current battle was happening. Isaac was sitting on one of the chairs, with dozens of players around him watching the match. Around him, he heard different kinds of conversations. So weak. I would be able to defeat them with ease. One of the players with ordinary brown hair said with certainty. Look at him what the hell is he doing? One of the players pointed at the screen. Or, more precisely, at the player who was holding flintlock pistol. Isaac also noticed him because he was part of the same class as him, but the skill difference was like heaven and earth. The player's way of holding flintlock pistol was very awkward, even comical. He didn't stretch his arms forwards, instead, only halfway, with his elbows pointing behind him. Once he fired, his posture became a mess, and he almost fell down on his butt. Ha 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 ha! The players around him roared in laughter like they were watching a clown making fun of himself. Isaac facebombed and didn't want to watch any longer. He didn't like seeing players making fun of someone with the same class as him, but the player had it coming. Isaac knew that anyone could learn how to shoot properly with enough training, but there are players that think they are anime protagonists who will stand on top of the world without any training. That player was one of them. Since he started playing, he didn't bother training, instead went to battle against wild animals without any training. As child, he had used slingshot, which allowed him to survive fairly well, but once he bought flintlock pistol, hardships started. 
Because everyone was saying marksman class was bad, he came to that conclusion as well. No matter what he did, he could barely kill anyone and blamed the class for almost falling down with each shot. He never thought it was his own fault for not using the gun properly. And currently, he was paying for his ignorance and arrogance. The player was being pushed backwards, and in his barrel, only one bullet was left. He noticed a swordsman rushing towards him with his sword above his head, ready to do an overhand slash. Die! The player shouted and squeezed the trigger with an awkward stance. Bang! Ah! The recoil started spreading all around his body, and he couldn't stay standing any longer and fell down on his butt. Arg! The player looked enraged while looking at the flintlock pistol on his hand, shit class. Fuck! Clank asterisk his eyes widened after hearing the sudden sound. The sound almost sounded like two swords colliding with each other, sending sparks flying around. But, instead, the sound came from the swordsman, who swung his sword and deflected the bullet with incredible timing. What? The player couldn't believe his eyes, you are cheating. Ha, pathetic. The swordsman had enough of his accusations and swung his sword, which sent the player's head flying away. Instantly, the separated head and body were teleported away from the Colosseum's arena. The player didn't die. However, he has a one-hour waiting time in the resting room ahead of him. Back in the gladiator spectator room. Peefed. The players couldn't contain their laughter. After losing, one-hour cooldown from playing is a little bit too light for such bad players. One of the players said mockingly. Isaac perked up his ears and thought with shock, one hour cooldown? That's the punishment? Isn't that little bit too light? He rubbed his chin and debated whether he should try out fighting in the Colosseum. It could turn out to be quite fun. He, after all, likes to fight against a strong opponent. Soon, the holographic screen showed only one player left standing in the arena. The players around Isaac slow clapped and didn't look that impressed by the match. Instead, the next phase was what interested them most. One of the arena's doors opened, and the beautiful gladiator reappeared with a gentle smile that brightened up the atmosphere. It is time for Wheel of Victory. Cheers! The spectators erupted in cheers with loud drumming sounds coming from the drums. Doom dun dun doom dun dun the player who won looked excited and didn't wait any longer and started spinning the wheel around. Soon, all the winning options became blurry as the wheel spun around rapidly. Gold. 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 The player prayed for the wheel to stop at the color of gold. The beautiful gladiator waited with a gentle smile, and soon the wheel became slower and slower. Everyone's heartbeat started beating in nervousness. Slowly. The wheel slowed down. Soon, the wheel came to a halt, and the color became visible. The beautiful gladiator sadly smiled. The wheel stopped at the color of gray, which means no prizes. No. The player shouted with disbelief. This is rigged, what the hell is this shit? Oh, language. The beautiful gladiator snapped her fingers. Snap the player disappeared from the arena with a rain of curses. The spectators felt pity for the player, but it didn't take long for them to forget about it. Inside the gladiator's spectator room, the players were laughing mockingly. They felt satisfied for someone having even worse luck than they had. Oof, such terrible luck. Isaac Riley smiled and could only guess the amount of rage the player was having currently. He had to fight equally strong players and somehow won, just to receive nothing. Shivers out of nowhere. Isaac's body trembled as he felt shivers running down his back. He turned his head around and saw five eye pairs looking straight at him in the distance. He narrowed his eyes and wondered why they looked at him with such hostility, but then he recognized them. Finally, one of the five young men said with a chilly voice. He had short red hair, an average-looking face, and a not very athletic body, but not bad either. On top of his head, his player tag was floating. Salamander, next to him, a young man with golden hair and bright blue eyes was looking at Isaac with hostility. He was wearing a heavy armory with an iron sword and shield. Knight of Holiness, next to him, two of his friends were sitting in a similar armory. Knight of Protection, Knight of Charming, 
they touched the hilts of their swords and glared at Isaac like they were trying to kill him with their stares. Next to them, another tall young man with ordinary brown hair was sitting with anger visible on his face. He scanned Isaac from head to toe, and before, he couldn't see Isaac properly, but now he could, and he didn't look like someone he expected, but his hatred increased in intensity after seeing him. Tom Valio. Wraithless had made their first appearance. Chapter 265. Wraith vs. Wraithless. Fuck. Isaac cursed under his breath and stood up under heavy hatred-filled gazes. When he was about to leave, he heard words that stopped him from leaving. Wraith, my old friend. Knight of Holiness stood up and innocently smiled. The room became quiet after his words. The players looked surprised and turned their heads towards the white-haired youth, and on top of the head, the name, Wraith, was visible. It's him. The players started whispering with each other. So-called pioneer of marksman class. Marksman class is still shitty. Remember the fool that just lost in the arena? Marksman class will be useless, and it won't change without any buffs. True. But, you must have seen the clip? Many guilds present in the room turned their hungry-looking eyes towards Isaac. Their eyes showed obvious greed for getting Isaac into their guild. In their eyes, he was like a valuable gem. Members of the Black Arrow Guild looked surprised. Wraith. Darth was surprised to see the white-haired youth, whom he hadn't met after Duo Dungeon, but had chatted with regularly. Wraith Chan. Queen Diana murmured and glared at Knight of Holiness, who obviously had bad intentions towards the white-haired youth. In her eyes, Knight of Holiness looked a lot like Darkseid. Wraith, remember me? Knight of Holiness asked innocently, but deep inside his eyes, deep-rooted hate was visible. I do, Isaac replied. Coward, Knight of Protection muttered under his breath. Against Isaac, he couldn't even do anything after getting shot in the head. The way he died enraged him greatly, but gladly. His family was relatively wealthy that allowed him to buy another VR helmet, but his parents weren't that pleased. But, after today's update, his parents started encouraging him to keep playing. He could focus on earning money, but he couldn't rest before he had gotten rid of his demons. A demon who goes by the name of Wraith. Knight of Charming clenched his fist, and last time, he couldn't catch him, but this time, he won't let him escape. Tom Valio's friendship with his longtime friends was somewhat ruined. Even though it was his fault, he blamed Isaac for it and didn't plan to stop before he licked his boots. The players who saw the scene were certain that they weren't friends. The way they kept looking at Wraith was one of hate. Only one thing was in their minds. Drama. Most of them opened their recording equipment. Darth stood up with his bow in his right hand. Good. Knight of Holiness murmured and asked, Well then, Wraith, do you want to fight in the arena? Isaac narrowed his eyes and asked, Why would I do that? Knight of Holiness shrugged and said, I just want to test the strength of famous Wraith. Nothing else, but if you are insecure about the strength of marksman class. You can, of course, refuse. His smile looked innocent, but it was clear he wasn't going to take no for an answer. The players started whispering, and if Isaac indeed refused, it would mean that he wasn't confident in his own class. Everyone thought that Wraith would show the true power of marksman class, but if he refused now, the amount of hate he would receive from both marksman class players and other players wasn't going to be small. Isaac felt like he was trapped inside a prison cell. The glares from nearby players made his skin itchy and uncomfortable. So, are you going to accept? Knight of Holiness did one final push. Fine. Isaac replied while grinding his teeth. Good. He replied with a larger smile, gladiator interface. He pressed, challenge, and wrote Isaac's player tag on it. Ding ding, Knight of Holiness has challenged you. Accept. Reject. Isaac pressed to accept, and the holographic screen disappeared into a cloud of smoke. See you in the arena, Tilda. Knight of Holiness waved his hand and left the room with the rest of the members of Wraithless, but they didn't forget to send another hateful glare in Isaac's direction. Isaac felt like a massive mountain was just placed on top of his shoulders. You are indeed famous. He heard a familiar voice, which he could recognize from anywhere. He didn't even have to look who spoke, Darth. 
he turned his head and saw the handsome black-haired youth walking toward him. Darth put his hand forwards and shook hands with him, old friends, eh? Isaac Riley smiled and shook his head, I have some history with them. I can see that. Darth replied and patted his shoulder, they are plotting something. I know. Isaac knew it by now, well, not that it matters. Maybe so. Darth stepped to the side and showed a path towards couches, where Black Arrow members were. Isaac walked with him towards the Black Arrow members. Wraith. Queen Diana smiled and stood up. Isaac shook hands with her and nodded toward other core members. Julia. He nodded at Player, who goes by the name of Colorful, who was also his former classmate. Colorful smiled and was about to say his real-life name but remembered that he didn't want anyone else to know about it. Hey, how are you doing? She quickly changed her wording and instead asked how he was doing. Good. Isaac sat down right next to her, with their knees touching each other. Colorful became stiff with an instant red face. Darth sat next to Isaac and sighed, Sigh, Wraith, how come you haven't visited Black Arrow Guild building? I did, Isaac replied with a chuckle. Oh, when? Darth looked surprised, when we were on Forest of Unknown, or? Nah, like. Isaac opened the interface to check the time and said, like two hours ago. Oh! Darth exclaimed, what were you doing there? I met with guard. He replied and shrugged, no one else was there. Oh, you met with old fart. Darth was curious about the reason for his meeting with guard. Queen Diana suddenly elbowed his waist and said sternly, don't call him that. You call him with that nickname too. Darth exclaimed, why are you trying to act like a proper guild leader? Queen Diana pouted and crossed her arms with displeasure, it's time for me to change. Everyone will know beautiful Queen Diana and her gentle nature. Darth and every core member rolled their eyes. Chapter 266, Real World In the Snow Star High School Inside Classroom 1A, youthful and energetic students were discussing with each other. Few glanced at the clock and noticed that the class should have started 10 minutes ago. One of the students who noticed that weird phenomenon was Alice, who was currently sitting in her own desk with one of her friends sitting right next to her. An adorable brown-haired girl with chubby cheeks and a petite body was shyly sitting next to Alice. I wonder where the teacher is. The adorable girl who goes by the name of Lily asked. Alice shrugged and played around with her pencil, not sure. Using her thumb and index finger, she started spinning the pencil around, making scratching marks appear on her desk. Mo. Lily grabbed her pencil case and took her eraser from there. She started erasing the black marks on the desk caused by the pencil's lead. Alice stopped spinning the pencil after noticing the mess she had made. I am bored. She threw her pencil inside her own pencil case and leaned on the chair. After five minutes, more students started wondering where the teacher was. Their teacher, who was never late, was nowhere to be seen. Alice was about to stand up and try to find their lost teacher, but then the classroom door opened, and a middle-aged woman appeared. She timidly walked to the front desk while being the center of attention of the whole class. Hmm? Alice frowned and looked at the middle-aged woman, who wasn't their teacher. Ahem. The middle-aged woman coughed and spoke, not many of you might know who I am. But, my name is Alina, and I am here to tell you all that your previous teacher has suddenly resigned. The students started murmuring, wondering why their teacher's sudden resignation. Why? Alice asked bluntly, which caused Alina to flinch. She has heard stories about Alice and felt very small and insignificant in her presence. H. He resigned because he planned to start playing white online. Alina wryly smiled, I don't need to tell what that is. Right? The students looked shocked and wondered what the hell was the reason. Alice frowned, to play white online? I know it's popular, but that doesn't sound very good reason to suddenly quit the job that is feeding him and paying bills. Everyone. Alina sighed and grabbed her phone from her pocket, take out your phones and look at the news. If you don't have a phone with you, look from your friend's phone. Alice grabbed her phone and went straight to the internet. It didn't take long for her to see the shocking piece of news. What? Her eyes almost bulged out and she knew what this news meant. 
Isaac wasn't the only genius in the Whitelock family. She was also a rather intelligent individual and knew the serious consequences that update would cause to the world's economy. The students started murmuring with each other with shocked looks. What is the point of school if we can become rich by playing? Games? That's right. I am already level 18. I wonder how much my white coins are in real life currency. Isn't this crazy? Now I understand why our teacher resigned. I wonder would my parents let me drop out? Are you crazy? I don't think it will be so easy to earn. Who knows, but I want to try. Alina heard the mutterings and thought inside her mind, school is important for learning, but what is the point if the only thing that matters how good someone is at playing games? Clap clap she clapped her hands, which silenced the classroom. Principal said that school day is over for today. We will have a discussion over the weekend, and your parents will receive news on Sunday about how we will proceed from now on. Yes. The students cheered, and quickly started packing their books. Yo, do you want to go play white online? Fuck yes, only fool wouldn't. Let's go check the Coliseum. The students quickly ran out of the classroom, leaving only Lily, Alice, and Alina behind. Alina sighed and left the classroom with a serious look on her face. She had wanted to be a teacher since she was 12, but it seems that the school and teachers won't be necessary for the future. I guess it's goodbye for now. Lily packed her things and stood up from her seat. Be safe. Alice rubbed her tiny head and watched as her friend left the classroom in quick steps. Soon later, Alice also left the classroom with her backpack. In the hallways, students rushed past her with excited faces. She also heard more than ten times the name of White Online. White Online. Alice thought. She reached the first floor and slowly wore her winter clothing that kept her safe from the cold. Once she was done, she left the building. Soon, she left the school's premises through the metal gates and reached the streets. Most of the students around her stayed to wait for their parents to pick them up, or some simply started running towards their homes with rapid speed. Alice, however, was walking calmly and silently. Hmm? Her footsteps halted after seeing something from the corner of her eyes. She turned her head and saw a store that was selling VR helmets. The store was bustling, with people leaving and entering the store. The VR helmets were being emptied rapidly, and all the bronze VR helmets had already sold out. Only a few silver VR helmets and gold VR helmets were left. The store wasn't selling platinum and legendary VR helmets, which were already way too expensive for common citizens. Maybe I can meet him there. Her eyes showed firm will, and she straightened her back. She entered the store and pushed past all the customers that were trying to reach the VR helmets. Customers looked shocked and wondered where the hell she got such strength. Hungry-looking customers took all the silver VR helmets, and only one VR helmet was left. Gold VR helmet. With hungry and greedy gazes, everyone inside the store rushed towards the VR helmet, but then... A delicate and soft hand grabbed the VR helmet and claimed her ownership of the item. The customers looked frustrated after seeing them missing the chance to buy VR helmet. But, there were few who didn't want to give up so easily. Hey miss, I will buy the helmet for double of the price. I will triple it. Alice looked at them and smugly smiled, mine. She said while hugging the VR helmet with maternal instincts. Chapter 267, Battle of Words in the Colosseum. Another match ended. The beautiful gladiator once again made the wheel of victory to appear, and the lucky player who won, prayed before spinning it. Once the spinning wheel stopped, the color of white became clear. Congratulations, you won 100,000 white coins. The beautiful gladiator screamed loudly. Yes. The player looked very excited, and if it were before the World Bank update, he would have been disappointed but now he was very excited. Clap clap the players inside gladiator area clapped slowly, somewhat. Jealous of the lucky players. Ding ding Isaac flinched after sudden dinging noise echoed inside his mind. In front of him, a notification popped up. Gather at the entrance of the arena. Your match is about to commence. Oh. Isaac bit his upper lip and stood up, but out of nowhere, someone else also stood up. He looked with surprise at Queen Diana. You got the message too? 
she asked with slight surprise. Isaac nodded. Good luck, Darth said to both Isaac and Diana. The core members of Black Arrow Guild also gave their own good luck wishes. They left the gladiator area and continued walking in the corridors until they found out a sign that told them where they should go next. After walking past multiple stairs and rooms, they reached the arena's entrance, where a few familiar players had gathered. Darkseid was sitting with his League of Assassins while members of Wraithless stayed seated silently. Once they arrived, they attracted all the hatred of the players present. Darkseid stood up in anger and pointed at Isaac with a shaky finger, Wraith, you little shit. Deathsong unsheathed his dagger with a murderous gaze, and suddenly, Knight of Holiness started laughing, ha ha ha. Wraith, you are indeed popular. You know that piss ant? Darkseid frowned. Back off. Salamander snapped and growled, he is our prey. Oh. Darkseid raised an eyebrow before chuckling, cuckoo. That is fine, but remember to humiliate him. Obviously. Salamander said like it was an obvious thing to do. Queen Diana kept standing calmly but looked at Isaac's facial expressions from the corner of her eye. Isaac's face had no reaction, with no remorse for what he did back then. He used to treat White Online as a game, but the members of Wraithless happened to be people who acted like White Online was real life. Also, they lost a fair sum of money because of Isaac, but he didn't expect them to buy new VR helmets. Creek one of the nearby doors opened, and the beautiful gladiator appeared with a gentle smile on her face. Who wants to go first? She asked. Hee hee, we will. Darkseid said while looking at Diana, right? Queen Diana nodded while taking her bow from her back. The beautiful gladiator nodded and said, I will go make the announcement, and afterward, the doors will open, and you too may enter. Darkseid and Queen Diana nodded. After seeing them understanding, the beautiful gladiator left, but her perfume was still lingering in the air, making many of the League of Assassins squint their eyes in pleasure. This will be fun. Darkseid grinned and saw Isaac standing without emotion. What is wrong, Wraith? Too scared to speak? No, Isaac replied calmly. Lies. Darkseid slowly moved towards Isaac with his upper body swaying side to side. Soon, his face was right in front of Isaac's. Boo! Darkseid made a sudden movement, trying to get any reaction from Isaac, but didn't even make him flinch. Hey! He chuckled and turned around to leave, but he suddenly turned around and sent an uppercut toward Isaac's jaw. However, the uppercut stopped an only inch away from contacting with Isaac. Still, there was no reaction from him. TCH. Darkseid clicked his tongue and waved his index finger, you are good. Keeping your fear inside you. You must be used to doing that, haven't you? Good actor. Deathsong said from the other side of the room, all cowards are. Enough. Queen Diana snapped and said with a chilly tone, Dark said, back off. Hey. Darkseid innocently smiled, Mama Diana? I am not scared of you. Suddenly, Isaac spoke his mind out. Everyone in the room raised their eyebrows in surprise. The League of Assassins chuckled, thinking that Isaac was trying to act tough. Oh! Darkseid grabbed the hilt of his dagger and narrowed his eyes, is that so? Why would I be scared of bullies? Isaac shook his head with a small smile, bullies are either too young to understand what they are doing wrong, but when they are older and still bully weaker ones, that makes them sad. Pitiful. Pathetic. Oh! Darkseid grinned and leaned closer to whisper with venom, you speak like you know who I am. I don't know who you are. Isaac said truthfully, but, I know what kind of person you are. Well then, tell me. Darkseid shouted and rubbed the hilt of his dagger, what kind of person I am. You are around twenty in age. Isaac started speaking, in school, you were neither popular nor unpopular, but you wanted to be the center of the attention. Darkseid tried to open his mouth, but no words came out. Deathsong frowned and wondered why Darkseid wasn't saying anything. The rest of the League of Assassins still thought that Isaac was speaking out of his ass. White Online came in perfect time to fulfill your desire to be the center of the attention. Isaac raised his head and looked straight towards the floating camera, 
you like to be the person who is feared and respected by others. You feel satisfied if someone talked about you with respect. Or fear, Darkseid was about to open his mouth, but Isaac continued. You challenge Diana because you want your guild members to look at you with respect and Black Arrow with fear. Your parents gave more attention to your siblings, which made you bitter, and you wanted to show them that you aren't a failure. I can bet that your siblings and parents are currently watching your stream. Isaac's words made Darkseid shocked. What you are showing them is that you are a bully. Isaac shook his head, they are embarrassed by you. Shut up! Darkseid screamed and grabbed Isaac from the collar, you piece of shit. Oh! Isaac looked still calm with a slight smirk on his attractive face, was I correct? Chapter 268, New Mythical Figure HMPH. Darkseid removed his hands from Isaac's collars and whispered with venom, You are not very smart, are you? You have no idea. Isaac calmly replied with a nonchalant expression. TCH. Darkseid clicked his tongue and walked back where his guild members were. The rest of the League of Assassins still laughed and still thought that Isaac was nothing but a clown. Deathsong, however, looked at Darkseid with scrutinizing gaze. Queen Diana walked next to Isaac and asked, Are you fine? I will live, Isaac replied while fixing his disheveled collar. Cheers asterisk behind the doors, loud cheers resounded. The beautiful gladiator walked until she was at the center of the arena. Hundreds of thousands of pairs of eyes were locked on her, but she didn't look fearful or nervous. It was like she had been under such heavy pressure hundreds of times until her emotions became numb and feels no pressure anymore. She raised her right hand and shouted powerfully, It is time for Challenger matches. The spectators became quiet. No one knows what the so-called challenger matches are. She only smiled and calmly started explaining, her honey-like voice reaching every inch of the Colosseum. Challenger matches happens when player challenges fellow player. The NPCs and other players in the audience widened their eyes in shock. Cheers! It didn't take long for the loud cheers to make their reappearance. The beautiful gladiator smiled and showed two fingers, actually. There isn't only one challenger matches. Instead, two. Cheers doom dun dun doom dun after even louder cheers appeared, the sound of drumming appeared, which fought against the cheers, but neither of them won. The rocky walls and floors shook, which resembled a lot of attack of the earthquake, but as soon as the shaking came, it also disappeared after more and more throats became sore. On the other side of the doors, Queen Diana slowly walked next to Darkseid, who was fuming with anger. Grr. A menacing growl left his mouth like he was a wild animal who had lost all of his reasonings. Darkseid, calm. The fuck down. Death Song appeared next to him and whispered, Remember the plan? Fuck plans. Darkseid bellowed and dug his fingers into his palm with enough strength to make it bleed, I will destroy her and then. I will destroy that arrogant prick. For fuck's sake. Death Song grabbed his collar and whispered with anger, stop being childish and calm the fuck down. Hands off me. Darkseid removed his hand and pushed him away, which sent Death Song sliding backwards until he crashed with one of the members of the League of Assassins. Hey, watch out. Fuck. Death Song screamed internally and ignored the angry comment he received from one of his guild members. After the careful planning, everything was crumbling down because their guild leader couldn't keep his emotions in check. Death Song glared at the culprit of the incident, Wraith. Creek asterisk the massive doors opened, and the large arena with hundreds of thousands of spectators became visible. Both Darkseid and Queen Diana felt overwhelmed but they gathered themselves as quickly as possible and entered the arena with chins raised. Isaac looked at the back of Queen Diana until the doors once again closed. He sat down on the nearby bench and still felt the itchiness of the skin, which was the result of the intense glaring from members of Wraithless. Don't you guys hate me a little bit too much? Isaac said while giving a strained chuckle, especially you knights. You guys tried to rob me and possibly kill me, and you guys treat me like I am the bad guy. What about me? Salamander stood up and pointed at himself, what did I do to you? Nothing. Isaac replied, but before Salamander could say anything else, he continued, however, you tried to steal from your so-called friends. 
Salamander gritted his teeth and shouted with rage. What does that have to do with you? Nothing. Isaac replied, but I stopped feeling bad about player killing you. What about me? Tom Valio finally opened his mouth. What was the reason for you killing me? XP. Isaac replied with honesty. You happened to be there when I desperately needed XP, and you and your friends suffered because of it. White Online was, after all. He sighed deeply, a game, wasn't it? Why are you saying it with past tense? Tom Valio asked while cleaning his sword, what changed? This is game. Isaac Riley smiled, but, it is also not a game. It is something else, something fascinating. Enough. Salamander screamed, Knight of Holiness, you better win. Hey, no worries. Knight of Holiness said nonchalantly and stood up with his metal armor making rattling noises. He can't penetrate my armor, let alone injure me. Interface. Isaac murmured and grabbed his Mosin Nagant M28-30 sniper rifle. Once his weapon was revealed, members of Wraithless snorted. The gun didn't look anything special, even very crude in their eyes. Their shiny weapons and sturdy shields looked much more powerful and menacing to the eye. Isaac leaned on the wall and rested his gun on his shoulder. Deathsong, League of Assassins, and Wraithless didn't see anything special about him. But someone did. Above their room, there was another floor from where special audience members could get a first look at the upcoming fighters. One of the figures was a muscular man with a short-sleeved, knee-length woolen tunic. However, his facial features were hidden by the short hood that was connected with the tunic. Even though his face was shadowy, almost unrecognizable smile could be seen if someone looked very closely. While everyone else around him was discussing about the upcoming fighters, he was silent, almost invisible. That white-haired youth looked so fragile. The words a nearby nobleman said caught his attention. He he. The muscular man chuckled, which was heard by the nobleman who was flirting with nearby noblewomen. Hmm? -mm. The nobleman angrily looked at the muscular man, who obviously laughed at him. Behind him, the noblewomen covered their mouths and giggled, which enraged the nobleman even more because he thought they were making fun of him. Who are you? The nobleman asked while grabbing the hilt of his sword, answer me. Who am I? The muscular man grinned and rested his well-defined chin on his palm, Spartacus, nice to meet you. The nobleman's body became pale, and foam poured down from his mouth. Kya? The noblewomen screamed after witnessing the nobleman suddenly passing out with urine trailing down from his trousers. Hey! The muscular man named Spartacus chuckled and looked straight at Isaac, fragile looking? Words of a fool. Spartacus, mythical figure, chapter 269, arrow of love. In the arena, the beautiful gladiator pointed toward the bright blue sky and shouted in her sweet voice, start. Cheers. The spectators screamed their hearts out. Darkseid unsheathed his two daggers and suddenly disappeared from the arena. Stealth used. Queen Diana grabbed two arrows from the quiver and put them on the bowstring. Around her, the wind kept making the dust fly around her, making the visibility somewhat poor. Swoosh asterisk out of nowhere, Darkseid's illusionary figure appeared behind Queen Diana and did an overhand slash. Queen Diana felt the approaching danger. She listened to her instincts and jumped away. While airborne, she let go of the bowstring and sent two arrows flying. Clank Darkseid used the side of his daggers and deflected the arrows with relative ease. HMPH. After snorting, his legs suddenly started glowing in purplish colors. Assassin's speed. Whoosh asterisk Darkseid used his first skill of the match. In the eyes of the spectators, he vanished and appeared in front of Queen Diana with his arms stretched forwards. Pow! His fist struck Queen Diana in the gut and sent her flying a dozen meters away. Oh! Queen Diana grimaced with a mouthful of saliva escaping her mouth. Thud, her body crashed to the ground, but that wasn't the end, and she rolled several more meters to the ground before barely managing to stop. Her beautiful green robes were dirtied with dirt and soil. In the gladiator spectator's area. Damn! Darth grimaced, and the rest of the black arrows also let out sighs of frustration. Other players, however, were cheering at the match.
they didn't care whether they would be insulting Black Arrow members that way. Back in the arena, Queen Diana stood up and didn't see Darkseid anywhere. Her face was beautiful as ever, untainted by any mortal sins. However, soon her beautiful face grimaced after a sudden numbing feeling appeared on her waist. A semi-long cut wound suddenly appeared on her waist, which made blue blood gush out, minus 125 HP. HP, 264 150ths. Her ears perked up after the wind's speed accelerated around her. She knew that another attack was about to arrive. But she had other plans. Not so easily. She grabbed only one arrow and put it in the bowstring before aiming toward the bright blue sky. Arrow rain. Queen Diana also used her first skill and let go of the bowstring, which sent the arrow flying straight towards the sky. However, when it reached the height of 50 meters, the arrow did a 180 degree turn, and hundreds of illusionary arrows appeared around that simple arrow made of carbon fiber, aluminum, fiberglass, and wooden shafts. The hundreds of arrows started descending with scary speed. Queen Diana stopped moving and only felt the brushing of the arrows going past her and stabbing on the ground. Few arrows brushed past her shoulders, legs, and arms. But not even one of them hit her. Someone else wasn't as lucky. Darkseid's stealth disappeared, and he appeared with three illusionary arrows sticking out of his legs. Arg! His face grimaced after seeing HP reducing at an alarming rate. Minus 221 HP. HP, 224 141sts. Death Song grimaced at the sight, and the rest of the League of Assassins. Members gulped. They had underestimated Queen Diana, but they still had blind faith in Darkseid. Death Song, however, didn't have much faith in him. Inside the Gladiator area, every player became silent, except Black Arrow members. Yes. Darth clenched his fist. Phew. Toby took a sigh of relief. Colorful clapped her hands. Greenflower nodded with admiration. Even Redless had an almost unnoticeable smile on his face. Back in the match. The illusionary arrows disappeared into tiny light blue particles. Queen Diana rushed forwards, using every fiber of her archer physique to increase her speed. Swoosh! Her sudden increase of speed caught Darkseid completely off guard. She raised her leg, which revealed her smooth and soft-looking thigh. However, no one had time to admire the sight because suddenly, she used it to send a kick that was packing all the strength from her physique. Damn! Darkseid jumped back, but he could only watch with despair as the kick landed on his body. Bam! His body flew across the air like a cannonball. Crash! He would have continued for several hundred meters, but in the end, the Colosseum wall stopped him. Minus 150 HP, HP, 7441sts, Queen Diana lowered her leg and moved the strands of her hair behind her ear. Cheers asterisk the spectators cheered at the beautiful display shown by Queen Diana. Whistle the male population was even more excited at the display and sent a whistling chorus toward her. However, many of them forgot one crucial thing. Most of them were with their wives or girlfriends, which earned them a slap to their cheeks from their lovers. Queen Diana innocently smiled at the spectators, which earned another round of cheering. Crash! From the Colosseum wall, Angry Darkseid appeared with a hateful look on his dirtied face. Queen Diana put her hand on her waist and smiled, Darkseid, aren't we done here? Shut up, bitch! Darkseid's dark eyes started glowing in the color of purple, while the rest of his mask had cracks and drops of blue blood dripping down from his chin. Queen Diana grabbed three arrows from the quiver and put them right on the bowstring. That is not very nice. Her beautiful eyes had a tinge of pink about to form. Grah! Darkseid leapt across the air, and suddenly the tips of the daggers started glowing in purple, Arc of Death. Arc of Death used. Wide arcs of energy beams left the daggers. The surroundings became dark purple, which gave the atmosphere an eerily feeling. Queen Diana's frail-looking arms started trembling after pulling the bowstrings, which seemed much heavier than before. Everything she did seemed much more difficult, and Queen Diana knew that it was the effect of Darkseid's ability. However, she still had a gentle smile on her face. Arrow of Love. 
The brownish arrows changed colors until they became beautiful pink. She is. Darkseid widened his eyes in shock. Queen Diana. Legacy. God of love. Cupid. Legacy rank. Godly. She winked and released the powerful arrows. The arrows effortlessly broke the energy beams, but they weren't done. Like homing missiles, they changed directions and went straight towards Darkseid, who was still airborne. Chapter 270 Beautiful Love Beautiful Love Queen Diana's sweet voice echoed in Darkseid's ears. Beautiful Love used. However, that voice rang warning bells in his mind. Stab 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 asterisk three pink arrows stabbed through his thigh, but Darkseid felt something weird spreading in his body. Before, when he was hit by the arrows, he felt the numbing feeling that was quite common among players, but now, he felt relaxation and happiness clouding his mind. W. What is happening? Darkseid swayed side to side, barely able to keep standing. From the wound on his thigh, a feeling of sweetness made his heartbeat rapid, like he was in front of his first love. In his eyes, heart symbols appeared out of nowhere. Ha! Ha! Around his cheeks, a hue of pink appeared. A rough and unsteady way of breathing made him look intoxicated. He raised his head and saw the beautiful Queen Diana standing with her attractiveness visible to everyone, but in his eyes, she looked like goddess who descended upon the mortal realm. Goddess! He murmured with a face of love. His body slowly lowered until he was kneeling with his head lowered, my queen. The spectators looked utterly shocked. Only a moment ago, he was screaming bitch. Now, he was treating like Queen Diana was way above his mortal status. What the hell happened to him? Change of heart. Simp cough, oops, excuse me. The room where League of Assassins, Wraithless, and Isaac were gathered. Death Song pushed his head through the bars that were stopping him from rushing to the arena. Darkseid, what the hell are you doing? The League of Assassins looked embarrassed after witnessing their guild leader's antics. Who would be afraid of them after this? Members of Wraithless frowned at the sight. The person currently kneeling didn't seem like the maniac who even made them fearful deep in their hearts. However, they had to use all their willpower not to cringe at the sight. Wow! Isaac knew that Diana's arrows caused the sudden change in Darkseid's attitude, so powerful. Isn't this basically mind control? Inside the gladiator spectator area. She has. Legacy? Darth locked gazes with other Black Arrow members. Each one of them looked absolutely shocked. They weren't aware that their guild leader was Legacy Carrier. They knew Queen Diana's abilities, but not even once they had seen her using a mind-controlling ability. The players in the room looked shocked. In their eyes, the menacing leader of the League of Assassins became a timid puppy. Many of them had to resist laughing. Otherwise, they could become the next target of the League of Assassins, who have a track record of assassinating players they don't like. Back in the arena, Queen Diana walked next to Darkseid and patted his head, who is a bad boy? I am. Please forgive me. Darkseid replied with a love-struck voice and felt his body shuddering after feeling Queen Diana's soft hand touching him. Sure, but for one condition. She removed the hand which received a disappointed sigh from Darkseid. Anything, my queen. Queen Diana took an arrow from the quiver and put it on the bowstring. She aimed and pulled the string, you have been forgiven. Darkseid smiled, having no idea that she was about to penetrate his head with a sharp arrow. However, at that moment, the heart pupils in his eyes faded away. His eyes widened in rage, and using his two daggers, he stabbed them deep inside Queen Diana's thighs. Stab! Stab! Spurt! Queen Diana's eyes widened in shock, and she saw how two sharp items pierced through her legs, leaving two gaping holes behind. Darkseid stood up and angrily punched her squarely in the face. Thud with the strong impact of the punch, Queen Diana stumbled backward and fell down on her butt. From her nose, a trail of blue blood trailed down. She touched her numb nose and asked with teary eyes, How? T. The effect was supposed to last for a minute. Darkseid grabbed his two daggers from the ground and wiped the blood with his sleeves, bitch. I don't know why. He had a hunch, however. He glanced at the holographic screen before him and debated whether that was the reason. Legacy. 
None plus legacy contender. Queen Diana tried to stand up, but when Darkseid caught a glimpse of her trying, he punched her in the face and forced her to stay on the ground. Her HP kept reducing rapidly. HP, 3450ths, seeing the HP, her heart started beating rapidly. A sadistic grin could be seen on Darkseid's face, which made nearby spectators grind their teeth in hate. None of them could enjoy the sight, which was why Colosseum was created. For families, friends, lovers, and enemies to enjoy a show that was for everyone. The children covered their eyes in fear. Most of them took a liking to Queen Diana, and seeing the scene made them think that Darkseid was a boogeyman in the flesh. Members of Black Arrow gritted their teeth in hate. The League of Assassins laughed with a joyful look and was relieved to see their leader back on his feet, striking fear in the hearts of his enemies. Raise your head. Darkseid raised Queen Diana's chin with the tip of his dagger, making her look him straight in the eye. However, after doing so, his body froze after his gaze was locked with Queen Diana's. Her teary eyes made her look pitiful, but underneath all the tears, something was hidden hidden in the color of pink. The heart pupils reappeared, but only for a second. Darkseid flinched and shook his head after the sudden shock, but once his eyes opened, he came face to face with an arrow. He snapped his head to the side, barely managing to dodge the sharp-edged arrow. However, another shock was ahead of him, traumatizing him for many years to come. Crack! Queen Diana's kick landed on Darkseid's groin, breaking something in the process. Every male audience member shuddered in shock. Darkseid's startled look soon became full-blown panic. Arg! He screamed words that were impossible to understand. Queen Diana pouted and wiped her tears, you made me cry. It was your fault. In the gladiator's waiting room. Darth facepalmed inside, beautiful and gentle, huh? Chapter 271, Beast Taming Scroll. The male spectators were shuddering in fear. Out of instinct, they closed their legs. Darkseid knelt on the ground while grabbing his bleeding groin. From his mouth, a trail of saliva dripped down. Oh! Oh! From his mouth, the inaudible sound of grunts came. Queen Diana turned her head towards the audience and saw many children looking at her with sparkling eyes. She playfully winked. The children cheered with joyful looks. Their parents didn't know how to react. On the other hand, their fathers were pale in fright, but their mothers were clapping with approving nods. In the waiting room. Ahem. Isaac averted his gaze from the arena. League of Assassins had their jaws wide open, large enough to fit a baseball inside their mouth. Deathsong kept biting his nails, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. In the arena. Darkseid raised his head and looked at the floating screen in front of him. HP. 1 441st, ugh. With shaky legs, he slowly stood up with a trail of blue blood dropping down to the dirt ground. He kept glaring at Queen Diana with dead looking eyes. Interface. With a hateful gaze, he pressed log out and disappeared from World of White. Queen Diana widened her eyes in surprise, he left. In the waiting room, Death Song slammed his head on the metal bars and screamed with a hoarse voice, No. The League of Assassins lowered their heads with visible embarrassment on their faces. Darkseid's floating camera disappeared, leaving plenty of dissatisfied viewers behind, who were mocking him ruthlessly. The members of Black Arrow could finally let out their frustration and cheered loud enough for every player to hear them. Isaac clapped his hands but remembered that it was his time to take the stage. Knight of Holiness innocently smiled at Isaac, showing a ruthless glint in his eyes. In the arena. After one of the competitors suddenly left, the beautiful gladiator rushed to the arena, player Darkseid had given up. Her sweet voice brought the spectators from their stupor. Cheers! Queen Diana already became a favorite in the hearts of spectators, and seeing her winning made them very pleased. She, however, felt dissatisfied. He had something else he didn't want to show. She frowned and remembered that she had shown her legacy. Now, Everyone will know her legacy ability, and some who might harbor bad intentions could target her. Meanwhile, Darkseid seemed to hide something he didn't want to show. Once in a while, he showed apparent tendencies to do everything to win the 
match, but a kick to the nuts made him wake up out from his enraged state. The beautiful gladiator stopped next to her and said sweetly, it is time for Wheel of Victory. Everyone's attention was once again on the arena, or more precisely, on Queen Diana. The holographic wheel appeared out of thin air. She didn't overthink it and spun the wheel around. At quickened speed, the wheel kept spinning until it started slowing down bit by bit. Slowly but surely, the wheel stopped spinning, showing a color that hadn't been shown yet. Brown. The beautiful gladiator sparkled as she announced what Queen Diana had won. Player Queen Diana's reward is Beast Taming Scroll. A. Queen Diana raised an eyebrow and was confused about the prize like many others. Beast Taming Scroll allows you to tame any beast. Congratulations. She snapped her fingers, and out of nowhere, a brownish and worn out scroll appeared out of thin air and landed on Queen Diana's soft palm. Beast Taming Scroll. Queen Diana murmured, and her eyes sparkled after realizing the possibilities it had. She stored it inside her inventory and was instantly teleported away from the arena. The beautiful gladiator smiled and took notes from Queen Diana and winked at the audience, next challenger match will begin shortly. Inside the waiting room, Knight of Holiness stood up and did his final preparations. Isaac was looking calm, however, inside his mind, he remembered the last time he fought against Knight of Holiness. He remembered his excellent usage of the sword. Knight of Holiness examined his steel sword and shield, ensuring that nothing was wrong with them. You know the plan, right? Knight of Protection whispered. Yes, Knight of Holiness replied and glanced at his inventory, where ten healing potions were waiting for him. A sickening grin was seen on his face, which he quickly hid. Don't show the healing potions until the very end. Tom Valio said, his gun perhaps can deal 300 damage. Don't let him hit you instead, cover your body at all times. No worries. He said while patting Tom's shoulder, I got this. Tom Valio narrowed his eyes and whispered, you better. Knight of Holiness stopped in front of the large wooden doors. Below his feet, he felt the trembling coming from the loud spectators. Doom dun dun doom dun dun the banging of the drums caused a sound loud enough to make tiny dust particles fall down from the rocky walls and ceilings. At first glance, it would look like the Colosseum would fall apart if it continued, but the foundations were strong. Strong enough to withstand the stress. Isaac stood up from the bench. However, he felt an itching feeling on his nape when he was about to walk to the doors. He scratched his itchy nape and turned around to see why the itchy feeling resurfaced. It was his first time noticing people being looking at them like animals in the zoo. Many of the noblemen and women were discussing with each other, but one person caught Isaac's eye. A muscular man with a woolen tunic. His face was shadowy, but Isaac could feel him smiling for an unknown reason. Hey, you two ready? The beautiful gladiator appeared from the door and asked. She noticed a handsome man with a heavy armory being ready, but the white-haired cutie was looking at somewhere else. Knight of Holiness turned his head and frowned, Wraith, did you get cold feet? Isaac shook his head, No, I am ready. He ignored the muscular man and walked next to Knight of Holiness. The beautiful gladiator smiled and nodded, I will announce you too, and when the doors open, you too may enter, is that clear? Knight of Holiness and Isaac nodded, Chapter 272, Ordinary Figures In the room where players who aspired to become gladiators had gathered. The players were still discussing about the match they had witnessed, but soon, the murmuring stopped after the appearance of a lovely young woman with dirtied robes. Their eyes showed the greed. And the players with thief class felt an itch to steal the reward. The young woman who appeared as the previous match's winner, Queen Diana, Queen Diana walked past the crowd of players and arrived at where Black Arrows were. Congratulations. Darth shook hands with her. Queen Diana smiled and nodded. The rest of the Black Arrow members also welcomed her with warm smiles. Guildmaster, Toby said with a severe tone while glancing at the players, who were looking at her with greedy gazes. Yes. Her eyelashes moved gently while sitting with her back straight and hands on her lap. Should we perhaps return to the guild? Toby knew about the stupidity of the players, who would do anything to get their hands on an item, 
that would perhaps help them or not. They don't think about the consequences that will happen if they offend large guild like them. No. However, Queen Diana rejected his proposition. Why? Toby wasn't pleased about the answer. We are not safe here. The rest of the Black Arrow members looked at their beautiful guild leader. Wraith Chan is fighting. She smiled and turned her gaze to the floating screen. I want to see his fight. Is that the priority right now? Toby wanted to slap some sense into her, but he knew it would be impossible to change her mind. Queen Diana smiled and nodded. Toby couldn't do anything except sit down with a sullen look. Back in the arena. The beautiful gladiator entered the arena with a chorus of cheers and whistles. She tightened the straps of her bikinis, making sure they won't fall down. Once she made sure, she stopped walking and looked at the vast audience, it is time for the second challenger matches. Cheers! Creek asterisk one of the large doors opened, sending a cloud of dust into the atmosphere. From there, Knight of Holiness appeared like knight in shining armor. His handsome looks were an instant hit among the female audience members, earning loud fangirl-like screams. He smiled and waved at the audience with his beautiful blonde hair fluttering alongside him. Before, the male audience members were cheering for Queen Diana. Now, the female audience members had their revenge. Most of the males looked displeased to see how their girlfriends or wives acted, but they couldn't tell them to stop either. It would be hypocritical. It is a knight. A little girl in her eights with large blue eyes shouted with excitement, Mom, look. Her mom was one of the ones who cheered loudly and was still doing it. Her husband was pouting, not feeling pleasant even the slightest. Knight of Holiness stopped next to the beautiful gladiator. While most of the audience members were focusing on Knight of Holiness, they didn't see someone else entering the arena as well. With pure white clothing and equally pure hair. An insanely attractive individual with fair skin that seemed too pure to be touched by mortal hands. The long eyelashes and pointy nose overshadowed his beautiful gray eyes. At first, he seemed someone who shouldn't be in a place like Colosseum, instead locked in a treasure vault. On his back, a gun in the color of light brown was strapped in. Not even for a second would someone think that he would know how to use it. Once he stopped walking and the audience members could take a good look at him, they didn't know how to react. No one cheered, only managed to open their mouths with their teeth and tongue visible. However, no words came out. The players in the audience stand, however, recognized him. The gun, white hair, the player tag floating. Each one of those told them the white-haired youth's identity. After their faces had a look of realization, they took everything they could use to record and pointed them straight at the match. First time since the appearance of the stream clip, Wraith was publicly fighting. On the top row of the audience stands. Three cloaked figures were sitting and were discussing an only moment ago, but now, they have become silent. That. Silence lasted several seconds longer until one of them opened their mouth. Legacy Carrier. A powerful one. His friends nodded. I guess we didn't come here in vain. Quite entertaining match ahead. The third cloaked figure didn't open his mouth, but when they were about to relax, their senses screamed for them to act. Before they could even stand up, someone sat in the seat right next to them. They shakily turned their heads and widened their eyes in shock. The figure that appeared was sitting with his arms on the top of the backrest and legs crossed. On his face, a trademark white ski mask was covering most of the face, except the eyes. He was wearing an outfit that would allow him to hide in the snow with a rather great success rate. Even though he looked like someone that belonged to the mountains, no one was looking at him except the three cloaked figures. Why you? They couldn't believe their eyes, and after getting rid of the initial shock, they lowered their heads with respect. Sit. Simo said while making a simple waving motion with his hand, let's watch the match, shall we? They gulped and sat down with stiff bodies. I, I if I may ask. One of them decided to be the brave one, G Great White Death, W why have you come here? You see, my legacy carrier is fighting. Simo saw their shocked looks, but, why are you three here? If I remember correctly, only godly, mythical, and special figures were allowed to enter Stronglord. The cloaked figures gulped, and fear was trying to attack their minds. You three. 
ordinary figures with ordinary legacies to offer for players wasn't allowed to enter any major city. Simo glanced at them from the corner of his eyes and smiled, you guys must know the reason? The three cloaked figures stood up and bowed at a 90 degree angle, please, forgive us. Leave before the gods notice. Simo mentioned casually, return where you three belong. Thank you. They said with gratitude and disappeared without leaving any traces behind. Chapter 273, Wraith's Struggle The gladiator bombshell involuntarily took a step back. The tension between the two men was intense. Knight of Holiness and Isaac stared each other down, and she could feel unbridled anger lingering in the air. She smirked, anticipating the insane match that was about to unfold. Match. Start. Her voice rang throughout the Colosseum, signaling the start of the match. Knight of Holiness didn't even give the stunning woman time to leave the arena. He crossed the distance in an instant, performing a rapid overhead slash. The strike was aimed at Isaac's head. Obviously, his opponent intended to end this match swiftly. Isaac leapt to the side. His eyes followed the sword, watching as it slammed into the ground, blasting dust and debris in every direction. Crack! The sound of the impact rang across the Colosseum, causing the blood of the onlookers to boil. After the initial surprise, thunderous cheers erupted throughout the stadium. Isaac frowned, putting some distance between them as he landed. He's already caught me in levels, maybe even surpassed me. He thought, looking at the destruction. Isaac felt like slapping himself. He was handed the mythical VR helmet on a silver platter. Anyone with brains would have used this opportunity to the fullest. They would have leveled up considerably before the helmet ended up on the market. However, Isaac hadn't used the mythical VR helmet as was intended. Instead, he'd squandered one of the opportunities that it had presented him. I need to start grinding XP. I cannot allow myself to become complacent. Knight of Holiness wouldn't allow Isaac to have any free time. Instead, he ran after the man like a starving beast chasing down its prey. He grasped the sword tightly in his right hand and swung at a speed that was considerably swifter than his initial strike. Isaac attempted to spin away from the blow, but the attack still bit into his shoulder. An image of their first meeting flashed in his mind, though this time, it looked as if Isaac was on the back foot. A drop of blood dripped slowly down the tip of the steel sword. It ran down the edge of the blade soon staining the hilt. A devilish grin flashed across Knight of Holiness's face. Throughout the audience, the cheeks of the women turned a light red. Cheers! The Colosseum shook as another round of cheers erupted from the audience. Men were standing in their seats, stomping the ground and whistling at the contestants. Isaac unstrapped his gun, bringing it around swiftly and using the butt of the sniper to launch an unexpected attack. The Mosin Nagant sniper struck out, aiming for the man standing behind him. Clank! Knight of Holiness moved his shield to block the strike at the last moment. Though he succeeded, the power of the strike forced him to stagger back. Isaac used this to his advantage. The gun vaulted him into the air while simultaneously pressing the shield to the ground. He used this momentum to spin swiftly in the air launching a well-aimed kick at Knight of Holiness's now unguarded face. The knight ducked at the last second, feeling the breeze of the attack ruffle his gorgeous blonde hair. Ha! Huh. He let out a relieved breath and rushed to regain his footing. Thud Isaac landed heavily on the ground. The disappointment in his eyes was evident, but he didn't let that slow him down. His weapon was already sweeping through the air, not stopping until it was pointed directly at his opponent. He aimed the sniper's barrel directly at Knight of Holiness's face and squeezed the trigger. Knight of Holiness had already regained his balance. He snatched his shield off the ground, swinging it in a wide arc until it slammed against the barrel of the rifle. Bang! The bullet left the barrel, completely missing the knight's body. The knight's muscles trembled beneath his armor. His sword snaked forward like a streak of lightning as he lashed out. Isaac swung the rifle just in time to deflect the blade away from his waist. A screeching sound echoed as the two metals clashed. Gritting his teeth, Isaac jumped back, his arms starting to numb from their most recent clash. He'd managed to deflect the sword, but it had been no easy feat. 
There had only been a handful of clashes, but he felt like he could accurately gauge Nitov Holoness's strength stat. The man's strength was definitely over 100, while Isaac's was only a measly 50. He couldn't count on his strength any longer. If he continued to go head to head with the knight, only death awaited him. Knight of Holiness snorted, What the hell is this pitiful strength? Isaac aimed his sniper and pulled the trigger. Ha! Knight of Holiness raised his shield, blocking the bullet with ease. Did I hit a sore spot? With a grin, the knight leapt forward and slammed his shield into Isaac. Isaac was knocked back nearly 20 meters by the blow. There was no noticeable damage, but a trail of blue suddenly poured from the edge of his mouth. Isaac used the edge of his sleeve to wipe the blood away. The NPCs noticed that the tide of the match was rolling in Nightoff Holoness's favor. The players were shocked to see the famous wraith being pushed back by some unknown player. Knight of Holiness smirked, once I've won this. I'll be known as the player who defeated Wraith. The other members of Wraithless were wholly unaware of his plans. Unlike the others, he really wasn't after Wraith's head for revenge. Instead, he just wanted to become famous. The shortest route to achieving that happened to be killing Wraith in front of everyone. Exacting revenge for their first encounter was simply a bonus. The knight's two friends, Tom Valio and Salamander, watched the match with satisfied gazes. They'd chosen Knight of Holiness to represent them in this match, even though all of them had wanted to fight. The reason for this was simple. He was the strongest one. Knight of Holiness sheathed his sword and spun around. He smiled and waved to the crowd, doing his best to show off and make this fight look easy. The female audience members swooned as his gaze ran across them, and the children in the crowd shouted in excitement. Even the male audience members clapped or whistled, impressed by his show of power. The many players in the stands were grinning for multiple reasons. Most of them had opened their streams long ago. Just having Wraith's name in the title caused their streams to become instant hits. Viewers flocked to the newly opened streams as soon as they saw the familiar name. Viewers were utterly shocked to see that Wraith was actually losing. Dot. Somewhere in Winterland. A young man around 18 was sitting in front of an expensive-looking PC. It had a 144Hz monitor with a powerful set of speakers next to it. He ran his hand through his black hair while looking over the setup. On top of his desk, a VR helmet sat. It was only a meter away from him, and it was close enough for him to feel the temptation. He glanced at the helmet, his skin itching and his hand almost reaching out for it. Not yet. He glanced at the clock and knew that it wasn't time for him to enter the vast world of white. Instead, he scrolled through the Stream King website. The look of disappointment on his face was evident as he glanced back at the helmet. He quickly found Wraith's profile on the website. The word, offline, was painful to look at. However, just as he was about to close the internet browser, he saw that one of the streaming titles included Wraith's name. This is definitely clickbait, he mumbled. The thumbnail showed a white-haired youth facing a heavily armored knight, making him question his initial assessment. He could recognize that white-haired youth anywhere. The young man quickly double-clicked on the title and entered the stream. The stream already had 200 viewers, and that number was climbing rapidly. Most of the viewers were excited at first, typing away in the streamer's chat. Soon, many of the words turned to disappointment and worry. In the stream, the knight put on a fantastic performance. His masterful swordsmanship was beautiful as he swung his sword with apparent ease. The knight quickly overpowered the white-haired youth. No. He can't lose, the young man spoke aloud. His new idol, Wraith, was being pushed back further with every clash. It was evident that the youth was struggling. He can't lose. Chapter 274, Furious creak the door of an extravagant mansion opened with a creak. A somewhat average young man entered the mansion. If it weren't for his multiple earrings, nothing about him would really stand out. A phone was pressed to the side of his head, and a voice rang through the speaker. Yeah, it's weird, Marvin agreed. He took off his jacket and tossed it to the side along with his shoes. His friend spoke quickly, excitement almost oozing through the phone's speaker. 
Marvin had to pull the phone away from his ear slightly so his drums wouldn't burst. That update is fucking insane, though. Deal with your shit there, and let's sneak inside Stronglord already. Marvin grinned, we'll be fucked if we get caught, but fuck. Now I feel kinda stupid for getting thrown out of Stronglord. All good stuff is there. It's fine. Apparently, NPCs will be fooled by disguises. We'll be fine as long as our player tags are green. If they turn orange, we're fucked. Got it. Marvin nodded as he strolled toward the stairs. We just need to be low-key. Hey! He only heard his friend chuckling. Clank the phone was disconnected. Low-key, my ass! Marvin huffed. He could already imagine the chaos they would bring to the Colosseum. Marvin? From the living room's couch, the cold gaze of a stunning middle-aged woman was pointed toward him. Why aren't you in school? Classes were cancelled, Marvin said while he stuffed his phone deep into his back pocket, it's all because of that white. Online update. Isabella looked surprised, I didn't expect everything to change so suddenly. This time, I didn't skip. Marvin said smugly before taking his first step toward the stairs. He stopped and turned as he heard hurried footsteps approaching him. Isabella appeared next to him and chopped him on the head. OWW. Marvin cried out, rubbing his aching head. Why did you hit me? What do you mean by this time? Isabella asked sternly, her hands pressed to her hips. Marvin paled and tried to shrug it off. He tried to look as innocent as possible. Ha. Ha. You must have misheard me. Thick veins sprouted in Isabella's forehead. Creak before things could become more heated, the door opened, and Alice stepped in with a box in her hands. Hey oh! She greeted the two and placed the box gently on the floor. She took off her jacket and shoes and tossed them to the side. Every class was cancelled? Isabella looked surprised as she received nods from both of her children. Sis, what is in the box? Marvin asked. The box was intriguing. It had no tags or words, it was just a plain white box. It's a secret. She said with a grin. She moved her shoes to the shoe rack before picking up the box and running to the second floor. It was obvious the girl was excited about something. Since Isaac had gone to his grandparents, the mansion had lost some of its luster. Alice especially had become rather gloomy and hadn't been her usual, boisterous self. Isabella wasn't sure what had happened, but she was happy to see her daughter in such an excellent mood. Well, I'm off too. Marvin quickly ascended the stairs, trying to disappear before the memory of their conversation returned. Marvin. He only heard his mother's angry yell. Marvin, however, had already disappeared. He would deal with the consequences later. Once he reached the fourth floor, he went straight to his room. On his bed, his VR helmet was patiently waiting. When Marvin's fingertips touched the steel texture of the helmet, he felt vibrations coming from his pocket. He pulled out his phone and opened the message. It was a message from his friend, Lionel. A.K.A. Lionsoul. Lionel. Go check the stream from Upon Time in Stream King. Hmm? Marvin stuffed his phone back into his pocket and walked over to his desk. His laptop sat already open on the desk. His reflection shone back on the black screen. Marvin tapped a button on the side and watched the blank screen spring to life. The home screen popped up, and he didn't waste any time navigating to the internet browser. Tap 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 the clacking of the laptop keys echoed in the room as Marvin's hands danced across the keyboard. Once he was done typing, he pressed enter. The familiar sight of the Stream King website appeared. What was that name? Marvin had to pull his phone back out to check the message. Upon time. He typed the name in. The screen swiftly changed, and it took him a second to make out what was happening. On the laptop screen, a stream was shown. The view count was rapidly rising. The chat was filled with harsh criticism. Why the hell are they so angry? Marvin turned his gaze to the stream and noticed that a battle was raging. At first, his face showed no reaction. He was somewhat interested, being that the Colosseum was a place that he desperately wanted to visit. He had seen many clips of the Colosseum, and it looked like a place where he and his friends would enjoy spending most of their time. However, the next moment, his eyes widened in shock. Isaac. 
he muttered his brother's name, staring at the screen in amazement. On the screen, a white-haired youth was desperately trying to fight back against a well-equipped knight. It was painfully obvious who was winning. The knight was a master at close-quarter combat, but the white-haired youth held his own, even with a long-range class. It was a miracle that he'd lasted this long and was able to keep going. Marvin glanced at the chat and clenched his fist when he started reading all of the mocking comments. Somewhere in Snowstar, four young men were also watching the stream from different households. They were the four friends of which Marvin played alongside in White Online. All of them had their own laptops open and were staring at the same stream. Their usual playful demeanor was long gone, and their brows were furrowed down in anger. Lionel, aka Lionsoul, stood up and cracked his knuckles before taking out his phone and messaging Marvin. Lionel, we'll see you in the Coliseum. Derek, aka I don't want to be a healer, grabbed his VR helmet and laid down on the bed. Before putting it on, he slid his phone from his pocket and sent a message to Marvin. Derek, heading on now, see you in the Coliseum. After sending the message, he covered his head with the VR helmet and entered World of White with an enraged look in his eyes. Inns, aka Phoenix, was already lying on the bed with his VR helmet on his lap in another part of town. On the other side of the bed, the laptop was still playing the live stream. Inns slammed the computer shut and lay down on the bed. Like the two young men before him, he sent a message and entered the world of white directly after. In the last household, Nico, aka Gerberese, was already wearing his VR helmet. He didn't bother sending any messages to the others. Nico had a wide grin on his face. He knew his friends better than anyone. He could already guess what they were planning to do. His face went still, and his grin froze as he entered the world of white. Marvin glanced at the messages and stuffed his phone back into his pocket. He lay on the bed with the large VR helmet. His furious countenance became emotionless, and like four other young men before him, he entered the world of white. They had only one goal in mind. Chapter 275, Phantom Knight. Knight of Holiness walked in circles around the battlefield with his sword held in an already victorious position. The audience's cheers filled his mind, awakening a sense of pride inside him that he wasn't aware existed. For the first time in his life, he felt what it was like to be the greatest. Seeing the love-struck gazes of the women in the crowd filled him with satisfaction while the envious stares of the men filled him with arrogance. However, those feelings were dashed when a familiar voice cried out from behind him. Watch out! The red-haired youth known as Salamander called out to the showboating knight. Isaac had once again raised his weapon, and the barrel was aimed at the back of the knight's uncovered head. Bang! Knight of Holiness flinched and swiftly raised his shield into the path of the bullet. Clank! The bullet ricocheted off the shield and flew off into the distance, somewhere outside the stadium. Knight of Holiness lowered his shield, annoyance unmistakable on his handsome features. The gun's barrel was smoking, and Isaac stared down the sight, his face not betraying any state of emotion. Fine. Knight of Holiness lugged his shield in a position that covered his entire body. I didn't intend to outright humiliate you, but you just don't know when to give up you brat. Isaac let out a long breath of cold air, Wee you. The knight had enough of this insolent young man and his casual attitude. He lunged forward, his heavy armor not hindering his movement in the slightest. He swiftly closed the distance between the two, arriving in front of Isaac before the young man had a chance to move. His grip on his sword tightened as excitement filled his mind. Unfortunately for him, Isaac had never intended on moving. As he stepped in front of the marksman, he heard a sound that was vastly different from the previous explosions. Bam! The muffled sound of a gun firing rang through his head. The knight couldn't even tell if the shot had been from a gun. It was just too deafening. An ice-covered bullet left the barrel and penetrated the ground in front of the armored knight. Frost burst out from the impact, and a thin layer of ice covered the ground. Knight off Holiness's foot slipped across the ice, and his right leg was launched upward. The scene had gone from staring down the emotionless bastard in front of him to staring at the sky in an instant. 
He felt that he was about to end up on his back and knew that would prove to be fatal. He couldn't let that happen. Though his right leg was up in the air and covered in frost, his left leg was still scarcely gripping the solid earth of the stadium. Memories of his childhood rushed into his mind. Something that he'd done hundreds of times came to mind, but to do it right now. It seemed outrageous. Still, it was the only solution he could think up on the spot. It was something he could do with his eyes closed, or even with a single leg. He put all the force he could muster into his left leg, leaping into the air. The knight used the momentum of his frozen leg to kick backward, tucking his knees as he did so. His body rolled through the air, and the last second backflip paid off. One second, he'd been dazed and worried for his life. The next, he was back to standing on solid ground. Cold sweat poured down his back as the thought of his imminent death was still clear in his eyes, yet his face betrayed the surprise that he felt at pulling off such a ridiculous save. The audience was utterly shocked at the display of acrobatics that had occurred before them. It didn't go unnoticed that the women in the crowd had an even greater look of reverence in their eyes. If he'd busted his ass here, there was almost no way he would have been able to defend against the man in front of him. Luckily, he managed to pull off a save, and he was facing the marksman as if the slip had never happened. He glanced at the layer of ice on the ground and grimaced, ice. Is this his true ability? Steam was still rolling out of the barrel of the sniper. Icy shot used. Isaac glanced at the notification in front of him. He thought that he had a chance to end this match quickly by using this skill. However, Knight of Holiness had exceeded his expectations. On the other side, even though he'd managed to survive, the Knight was feeling a tremendous amount of humiliation from the near-death experience. Knight Rush used. The armored man crossed the distance between them in a single bound. To those watching, it looked as if the Knight was flying through the air. Isaac leapt out of the way before the Knight could steamroll over him. Knight of Holiness brushed by his opponent. Isaac thought he'd gotten away, but the knight shifted the position of his shield, and his body flew in a new direction. The knight rotated almost a full 180 degrees and was once again rushing toward Isaac. He hadn't lost any momentum. It was like the shield would drag him in any direction that it pointed. Though Isaac had managed to dodge, he hadn't put much distance between himself and his opponent. With the sudden turn, the knight was almost upon him. Knight of Holiness raised his sword and struck down toward the man who dared to humiliate him in his moment of victory. This time, he would be sure to kill the bastard. Isaac raised his gun, barely managing to block the strike. It felt like a mountain had been dropped on top of him. He fell to his knees. The muscles in his arms bulged as they pressed back against the tremendous force. Isaac felt that his bones would shatter at any moment. To everyone watching, it looked as if the sword had been blocked, yet Knight of Holiness let out a mischievous fit of laughter. This was the moment he'd been waiting for. Phantom Knight used. The steel sword changed colors, and the metal suddenly became translucent. To Isaac, it looked as if things were happening in slow motion. One second, the steel sword was being blocked. The next, it had phased entirely through the Mosin Nagant sniper rifle. Isaac widened his eyes in shock and tried to move out of the way, but the speed of the strike was far beyond what he was capable of dodging at this range. Spurt! The sword not only phased through the rifle but also straight into his camouflage clothing and the armor that lay beneath. As the sword penetrated his armor, the tip became solid once more and dragged through his torso. A deep gash formed, unable to be seen by the onlookers, and blood started filling his armor. His chest became numb, and an odd warmth spread across his chest and abdomen. The sword, even passed through my armor. The sword was entirely solid now and was sticking out of his back, the tip covered in blood. Knight of Holiness took his time pulling the blade slowly from the young man's chest, grinning as he did so. Blue blood rushed from the wound in his chest when the knight finally pulled the sword free. The blood cascaded downward, staining his clothes and the ground beneath. This armor is completely useless against him. Isaac's eyes were closed, as he didn't want to open his eyes to see the insane drop in HP that he knew had occurred. If this armor is useless, what good was having armor if it couldn't even protect him? 
How could he win this fight without it? Isaac mustered up the willpower to open his eyes. Minus 440 HP. HP, 7526. Knight of Holiness rested the edge of the sword on Isaac's shoulder. A minute scratch showed on his neck as the blade hovered just a hair's breadth away. Well, I can honestly say that I have enjoyed this little spar, the knight looked condescendingly down at Isaac. He brushed his bangs to the side before continuing, you should be proud that you were the stepping stone for the rise of the great knight of holiness. Goodbye, Wraith. The audience's cheers rang loudly in the stadium as the knight once again swung his sword. The members of Black Arrow looked on in agony as the blade closed the distance. The sword closed the distance, and a rain of blood showered the knight as it slid across Isaac's throat. Spurt!